that once again is a report from our city manager to update us on our current emergency response efforts related to COVID-19. Welcome, Deb. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll keep it uh, pretty short as there was a, a media briefing that went out today. We are in the red tier, Santa Clara County, which means a couple of things, uh, and I'll just hit on a couple of them. Uh, indoor dining can now resume at 25% capacity, and now there's no difference between how Santa Clara is operating and the state. So we're all lined up. It's just a matter of uh, now staff now adjusting to all of those things with regards to other protocol. Uh, retail stores are at a maximum of 50% capacity. Uh, movie theaters uh, are at 25% of capacity or 100 people, whichever is fewer. Gyms and fitness centers can now reopen at 10% capacity. Uh, the mandatory directive on travel, i.e. the mand uh, self-quarantining after you travel 150 miles outside of your region has been lifted. It's still highly recommended. And then schools may reopen to full in-person instruction, instruction once a count the county has been in the red tier for two weeks, so the next 14 days, starting from today. Uh, however, schools that have already reopened may remain open if, for example, the county goes back into purple tier, which is the situation we have had up until this time. Um, so there's two more weeks before schools can reopen, and I am not aware of the CS CUSD plan at this time. Um, vaccine status, Johnson & Johnson was approved, as most people know. Uh, the state is expecting to receive approximately 380 doses. Uh, how it will be distributed is not exactly known, except it's normally allocated based upon county population. The vaccine is designed to prevent severe illness. This is just a reminder, but will not prevent someone from getting the illness, um, just like the flu shot. So it's just to prevent people from theoretically becoming so ill that they have to be hospitalized, which is why we need to continue testing to monitor the case rates. Um, so testing continues and needs to continue for that reason. There's another testing opportunity at the Senior Center tomorrow from 9.30 to 3.45. Plenty of appointments available. Um, in Cupertino, there are currently 804 cases by zip code, 815 cases by city. The last time I reported about 781 and 780, 792 cases respectively, which is an increase of 23 in the past two weeks largely half of the previous increase. So that's not a good, that's not a bad story. So hopefully that downtrending will continue. Um, good news also on the homeless encampment. The, the three more people from the temporary outdoor location that we had established on Valco Parkway at Tantau um, and one individual in Cupertino, in the rest of Cupertino took housing with abode, which now means we have 12 at Casa de Novo. We had 11 out of 15 take the housing initially, two found permanent supportive housing so far, leaving nine in the housing prior. There were three at the outdoor location, one additional person sleeping in her car um, near the target. Two from the outdoor location took housing, one left the county with relatives, the, the person living in her car to also took housing. So the temporary outdoor location has worked and served its purpose and was removed this morning uh, pretty early. So that's so far a big success story. Um, I want to leave the rest of my time to make two more fun announcements since I'm always reporting on not such good news things. Um, one is the, um, take the Cupertino take the pledge effort. We're trying to make you know all of the COVID protocol fun and rewarding and try to spin it in a positive light. Um, so we've created a take the pledge webpage at uh, cupertino.org forward slash Cupertino cares. And for anybody taking the pledge to keep everybody else safe in Cupertino, uh, the, the person has a chance to win a free family care package that includes four reusable face masks that are branded Cupertino cares, four keychain hand sanitizers, sanitizing wipes, sidewalk chalk, crayons, masked up colored pages, heroes wear masks, children's book, and a hashtag Cupertino cares mug. So that will be from, um, winners will be notified. It's open till March 31st. So take the pledge and um, we will be giving out people, winners will be notified April 6th and will be able to pick up their uh, care package at the Quinlan between April 8th and April 9th at different times. 
Second announcement is, I love these kind of big bunny fun runs. We're doing a big bunny 5K virtual event, which means you can donate and not do the run part unless you really want to. <laughs> and um, basically what we're doing is it's a $20, $20 registration uh, for a t-shirt, a race bib, water bottles and stickers and bunny ears. Uh, and it'll be basically be like every other year except virtually. Um, this will be at, um, I'm sorry, uh, you'll be getting your packet mailed. You can get your packet packet mailed for an extra $5 per packet. Um, the t-shirt size will also be asked about online when you register. And you can, or you can pick it up at Quinlan on April 1st. Um, and we will follow up with all the advertisements needed for events coming up. Thanks for the time. Absolutely. Thank you, City Manager Fung. And let us go on to our City Council for item number six. These are our committee reports and assignments. And so would anyone like to report out on their committee assignments ever since, I believe it would have been February 16th when we last met at our regular session. Um, any hands? Well, no, just shy. Okay, I'll go first then today on this committee assignment. Um, I will report out on a couple of VTA meetings. Um, I'm on a committee, uh, safety, security, transit planning, uh, and operations for um, for the VTA board. Um, and uh, VTA is trying to get uh, people to vaccination sites. So that's a, a good effort, I believe, that they're making. Um, our 219 meeting had to do with a board workshop, and uh, we did talk about some pretty fundamentally important um, future positioning um, matters with regard to, are we looking more at um, improving the interoperability between their existing modes of travel, i.e. buses and light rail, um, or are we trying to innovate uh, and I, I think these are just very important conversations to be having at this point. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it did seem to me that there was uh, some appetite on our, uh, our transit board to try to look towards the future. Um, so I'll, I'll keep everyone updated on how that conversation goes. And then on February 24th, um, City Manager Fung and I uh, participated in a mayors and managers meeting of uh, the five West Valley cities. Um, one thing I will point out, it's also VTA related actually, uh, that we uh, touched upon there was uh, legislation that has been um, introduced by Assembly Member Berman, uh, who does uh, represent a portion of Cupertino, the kind of a Northern uh, portion, uh, essentially the Homestead Villa neighborhood. And uh, what that is, is an effort to try to reconsider um, the board composition of VTA um, you know, personally, I think it, it tends to uh, reduce the amount of representation from the West Valley. It, it is not just a wholesale transfer of board membership to board membership. We actually lose our uh, per capita membership as uh, one of the smaller cities. So currently, I represent um, the five West Valley cities on the VTA board. Um, this re-envisioning um, done by state legislation of, of the VTA board would put five seats with the county, two with the city of San Jose, and then two uh, distributed out throughout all the other smaller cities of the county. So um, yeah, that was something to, to consider as well. Anyone like to go next? I see Vice Mayor Chow has her hand up with regard to committee assignments. So um, on the 22nd of February, I attended the audit committee with Council Member Moore. We reviewed the 2019-20 financial report and then there is a review of an um, enterprise assessment. So this is uh, um, the first review of that report. And on the 24th of February, I attended the Santa Clara County Recycle and the Solid Waste Management. I'm representing the, um, I think the West counties, uh, several cities. And they, so it seems uh, the general problem among all the cities are the cost of recycling uh, waste is up, and and but then we are collecting more and more recyclables, and so that's uh, um, something everyone is facing with. There was an interest, interesting report by 
a San Jose State uh, PhD students on cardboard recycling, because we, as more and more people are going online shopping, we have a lot more cardboard. So some cardboards are not recyclable at all. Some a portion are, some are more recyclable. And but this is um, an issue that's worth looking into. They didn't really provide, uh, I think, recommendations. Yeah, just some statistics on what's available, what's the condition right now. On the 26th of February, uh, legislative, legislative Review Committee, we looked at uh, SB 6, 7, 9, 10, 15. And uh, next meeting will be March 12th. Great, thank you very much, Vice Mayor Chow. Would anyone care to go next on our reports out on committee assignments? Council Member Way. Okay, thank you, Mayor Paul. So I am still in uh, you know, learning mode. So I've listened to um, the uh, on February 17th, I listened to the Bicycle and Pedestrian Commission meeting just to learn the updates and how uh, you know things are happening there. And on the 24th, I listened to the Park and Recreation Commission meeting. On the 20, uh, 19th, I attended the Silicon Valley Leadership Group's Diversity Forward Summit, and it's uh, it's it's they have really good speakers and um, very forward looking. And on the 23rd and 24th, I attended Silicon Valley Clean Energies, uh, the State of the Valley Conference. And, you know, again, it's looking into the future, what can be done with clean energy um, to fight climate change. So um, it was very enlightening. On uh, February 19th, uh, Manager Deb, City Manager Deb and I hosted a uh, Food for Thought Coffee with Residents. That was my first Coffee with Residents with about 31 attendees. And we have all kinds of questions and I thought I was very productive. And now I know our fellow council members do that too. And um, let's see. Oh, on 25th, I attended the uh, COVID-19 update from the county hosted by County Board of Supervisor Joe Simithian. It's always good to get updated and um, and our city is in, in, in steps with the county. So that's my learning curve for this month. Great, thanks so much, Council Member Way. Just, uh, just a, a general reminder um, for this particular item near the beginning of our um, agenda, it's just the committee assignments that you have. So in the committee assignments sheet. So, so I think the Silicon Valley Clean Energy one would have you know, done it. So like wherever we're officially representing the city for in a particular capacity. And then the rest of it is, is great to know. It's just that it falls under an agenda item near the end of the um, near the end of the agenda with um, reports out on council contacts. All right, got it. All right, thanks. Um, all right, Council Member Willie or Council Member Moore, do you have any committee assignments to report out since the sixteenth of February? So I'm I'm happy to go next. So I didn't have any committee assignments uh, this time, but I did attend as a. Uh, visitor the uh, uh, legislative action committee that uh, Councilman Chow uh, referred to. And on the 23rd and 24th, the State of the Valley, now a little bit, you know, for what you said there, but I think it's important, you know, a, as a point that to me, the real takeaway though, is that they, the State of the Valley, they said that, you know, it's a good reminder to all of us, the most affected people it, during this pandemic are the low income people. And they even tossed out the number that 55% of the low income families didn't even have internet connections in the Valley. And so all the efforts that have gone into getting them connected have been well, well uh, received. But going forward, we need to re remember that there are so many people that do need help and unfortunately, it takes something like a pandemic to uh, have it uh, be visible to us. And so I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Wally. And um, I'll uh, go ahead and ask Councilmember Moore, did you have anything else that you would like to report out since our uh, last meeting? For uh, well, thank you, Mayor Paul. As you know, I'm on the uh, uh, the uh, LRC and the audit committee with uh, the vice mayor. 
Uh, just want to add that you mentioned AB 1091 uh, uh, from Mark Berman. That is on our agenda uh, moving forward, and you should be seeing uh, some letters uh, to review uh, for all the um, different uh, proposed bills which uh, the Vice Mayor mentioned. Very good. Thank you, Councilmember Moore. Um, that will conclude item number six. We're next on to consent calendar, uh, which is items number seven and eight on our agenda. Uh, before I ask um, other members of council or the public, uh, whether anyone would like to pull either one of these, I will go ahead and pull item number seven. Um, would anyone from council or the public care to pull item number eight? Okay, seeing none, I will uh, ask for a motion on item number eight. Uh, I move I move approval of num item number eight. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Way. Would anyone like to second Councilmember Way's uh, motion? I'll second. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Councilmember Willie. Madam City Clerk, if you would please conduct a roll call vote on item number eight. Councilmember Moore? Aye. Councilmember Way? Aye. Councilmember Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, I'll go ahead um, and speak to item number seven. This was our, um, usually it's an annual workshop. Uh, we did, if you look over the draft minutes, uh, suggest at the end of it that we have um, a follow-up uh, workshop uh, at some point during the year. Um, it was a very constructive session. Um, however, it was not noticed to talk about our, uh, our work plan agenda. And so my proposed edits to the uh, draft minutes speak to that uh, because I believe that council member Moore uh, mentioned that we should be um, considering the work plan because it was actually quite different from what was noticed to the public um, on, the, on the work plan item. And so, um, you know, I, I, can, I can pull that up if uh, anyone would like but the work plan agenda was just very significantly different. It wouldn't give a member of the public uh, notification that we were considering uh, this, this very important um, uh, item on our work, work plan workshop, I should say, uh, agenda. And so what I'd like to do is ask that the city council, um, and I'm gonna try to, I'm going to try to pull up a couple of items on my on my screen here. Um, so bear with me here. I'm going to go ahead and try to um, share a couple of things at the same time. Uh, okay. So the first thing I'll do is all this nifty technology. Eh? Um, First thing I'll do is I'll, I'll share the agenda. So, so do people, well, let me stop that actually. Do people see the agenda up here? Um, does it say agenda February 6th, 2021? You said nodded head, okay, great. Um, so you'll see city council training workshop. Um, the city council will be discussing best practices of governance and clarifying roles. Um, so, there was an attempt to try to uh, talk about our work plan, which is not, even though they, they share the word work in common, it, it's, it's not really anything uh, remotely akin to the workshop uh, topic that was noticed to the public. So uh, the draft minutes say, you know, and this is near the end of our meeting here, um, the city work plan in this section on page nine of the of the very detailed draft minutes. And so I, I do commend whoever put these minutes together. Although I will you know, mention that there's no signature to them. Uh, maybe that would be a good idea. Um, but after a brief stretch break, the group reconvened to review and discuss the city's work plan. I think that entire section should be omitted. We can keep the part about after a brief stretch break um, and then wrap up in next steps. There's a commentary regarding the city manager committed to updating and distributing the city work program. I, I think we should just altogether omit um, the work program discussion. And so 
Um, I'll show you what we have as uh, what was called attachment A to the draft minutes. I think this should be nixed um, because again, there was no um, notice to the public that the work program was gonna be a part of this workshop. Um, and it was also in as exhibit B to the agenda item tonight uh, to agenda item number seven. So I, I think that this should be nixed as well here um, as exhibit B. Um, item B, I should say, uh, under uh, item number seven. And so here's what I would propose that we do um, in terms of uh, how we would uh, adjust this. And let me try to make sure I'm finding the right document here. Um, okay, so the first thing I would suggest is that we, uh, again, delete exhibit A from the draft minutes. Um, I'd like to omit exhibit A uh, in item 7B as part of the attachments to the item, um, and then delete the city work plan section of the draft minutes. Under wrap up and next steps uh, section of the draft minutes, um, I would uh, like to move that we delete that first paragraph and insert into the beginning of this section the following language to read, quote, after a brief stretch break, Ms. Fung began to discuss the city's work plan but Council Member Moore at that point raised concerns with regard to considering the City Council's work plan at a workshop where the work plan had not been noticed as an item for discussion. Mayor Paul agreed with this concern and asked that the City Manager bring back the item at a duly noticed meeting. And then the following paragraph uh, would just catch us up with the rest of the content. The city manager committed to following up on the bike rack items uh, identified by council in the workshop to be addressed at another meeting. The topics are listed below. And, and just to clarify to everyone listening, when this refers to bike rack, it's not an actual physical bike rack. It's it's an allusion to some topics that you know people uh, that were coordinating this put into uh, essentially a bucket uh, of items for council to follow up on based upon what our workshop topic was. So, so that's what I would like to motion, just this entire you know, set of suggestions. I mean, I, I, I think I understand what was done, but you know, the, the good thing about this is that we have a work plan item right now tonight that we're about to consider. So um, you know, immediately after um, our consent calendar, we have the work plan item appropriately noticed. I just don't feel that it was appropriate for us to be considering the work plan. Um, and I will also add, I mean, just, you know, and, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to, um, I, 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 I wanna keep everything on a good relational level, but the additional thing that was attempted at that time was to take wholesale our current fiscal year's work plan and move it forward and make it essentially a two-year work plan I just, I just feel like, look, when I thought about it later, I was like, you know, first of all, we had no notice that the work plan would be discussed. Second, we're only seven, at that point, we we're only seven months, all right, into that, this particular fiscal year. So I, I really think that it is appropriate that if we have a workshop and it's about essentially communication methods, we should keep it at that. Um, and, and, you know, from my recollection, um, we can see if council, uh, council's recollection comports with what I, I was remembering. This is a more accurate rendition of, of what occurred uh, at the end of our workshop. So that's why I would like to um, put forward this motion uh, to um, amend the draft minutes. Um, so I, I do Mayor see two hands Paul. up. Uh, Mayor Paul, you do have a hand raised from, from a member of the public also. But oh. uh, I, so I was, I was going to say so moved um, for, for the motion, but uh, I need to hold off on that. Um, yes, very good. So I'll, I'll just, you know, table that for now. Does anyone have any questions? Since I'm essentially the presenter here, um, does anyone have any questions with regard to, um, you know, what I'm, uh, City Manager Fung, you have your hand up. I just wanted to make a comment that the uh, mistake in noticing was unintentional. Okay, fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, uh, Vice Mayor Chow, did you have a question that you wanted to ask with regards to this? Um, I'll second the motion. Comes After we bring it back up. Already moved. But I'd like to confirm that it's true. The slides that you are trying to scratch from the minutes, we didn't see those slides. 
I think it was, yeah. So it no, wasn't I discussed and we... No, I did. Oh. It was presented. That's and what also I that. think we, I don't think we should use the term bike rack in the meet, in meeting minutes because that's not a commonly understood term. Um, so if we can use some other term that the public reading the minutes some two or three years later would understand, that would be better. Well, let's put that in the form of question staff. Is there a different terminology um, City Manager Fung that you think we can use for parking lot items, items, items for like consideration. That? Parking lot, um, I, but it might have the same confusion. So it could be uh, items that are tabled or I've collected items. I don't really have a strong feeling what to call those. How about we just eliminate the words bike rack following up on the items identified by council in the workshop? I mean, it seems like kind of unnecessary jargon. Um, okay, well, let's go to our member of the public with her hand raised, Jennifer Griffin. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Mayor Darcy. I'm glad you all brought this up because when I saw the noticing of this item of this meeting, I I thought I thought, oh wow, is that the one that like they used to hold in the hotel? That I think they had a uh, they had it at two different hotels in Cupertino, and it was like a I don't know, it was from you all will remember what that was, but it, I, I was confused about what this was. Then I started reading about it, and I thought, oh, they're just going, it's exercises in maybe par parliamentary law or it's communication stuff. But I'm really glad you brought up the part about the work plan because I can understand. I mean, the poor staff, you know, there is so much stuff. The city generates paperwork. We are probably as busy as L.A., and... I, but yeah, you, there is a point that if somebody is talking about the work plan, it it probably should be on, it should be publicized. And I understand that it's a, you know, okay, it, it, that I'm great. Everybody's fine with that. But of course, the bike rack, yeah, I was just looking at this and I thought, why are they so worried about a bike rack? Why did that come up under city work, work plan? Where are they putting the bike rack? So I... <laughs> I know we love bikes, but yeah, I think maybe using a different term might be bad. I was confused before, and the bike rack, I, kept, I thought, wow. Yeah, so let's just come up with another word. But yeah, I think this is an appropriate um, situation, especially the part about I'm confused about what, if, if they were going to do this for two years or if it was just a one year. But I, I guess, are you guys talking about this in the upcoming item? Is this the... The general work plan is that the next one we're talking about? Yes, anyway, it is. Uh, thank you. Okay, <laughs> all right, thank you. Yeah, right, thank my you, track, I'm as confused as usual. Great, thank you. Our, our next speaker is Lisa Warren, and Lisa is the only other hand up, and so you will be the last speaker as well from the public. Um, so I, I too want to thank you for bringing this up because when I got that notice, I, I also thought initially because of the time of year that it was going to be one of the hotel long days because um, I've attended some of those but it didn't appear and I was looking for work program and it wasn't there either and I had conflicting meetings and the other one became a priority when that work plan wasn't in there so I'm really glad I'm I'm I believe it wasn't intentional you know I but I'm glad it's being corrected and honestly if I hadn't watched tonight I wouldn't have even known it happened so I'm grateful for that correction. And I just as a point to make, um, I think this year may be a more critical year to have that work plan discussion. It may be harder, but given what's happened and what may be expected to happen in the future, I see this year maybe being a, an uh, a situation where priorities may change on the work plan more than they would in an ordinary year. So yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Our, um, so, so, so here's what I'd like to propose at this point, bringing it back to council. Um, you know, to, to keep it clean, I'd like to just provide staff direction to bring this back um, and not have exhibit A 
uh, in the item that we end up approving um, because it, it really was not a discussion of the work plan. It wasn't noticed as such. Um, and um, I, I would like to see the draft language um, and I'll go ahead and share this again because of the fact that we've modified it a little bit. Um, as, as it appears here with just this term, this confusing term, deleted bike rack. Um, and so would anybody be willing to bring a motion to that effect? Well, actually this is you know my terminology. So let me, let me just bring that motion. Would anyone like the second? Um, and again, this is to instruct staff to bring this draft back without exhibit A uh, in the item itself so that we could, you know, in, in my view, properly consider it and, uh, and approve it in our following meeting. I second. Okay, thank you, Council Member Willie. Are there any other uh, comments from Council at this point? I, I see um, Council Member Moore, you have your hand up. Um, yeah, just one comment. At this point in that meeting, we had uh, zero members of the public present. So I, I wanna just make mention of that. Okay, uh, well, thank you. Did you want to just state that for the purposes of our meeting here or did you wanna make that part of? Goodness, um, there might be some benefit to having that in the record, that there there were no members of the of the public um, present, and I think that uh, you know really raises uh, some alarms, you know, for me. And I know there were some comments about finances, and and which led me to go pull up the agenda and see what the actual language was uh, in it. Um, so if you know if you find merit in adding that uh, detail. Um, you know, please do if, if you don't, if you, if you don't, that's fine as well. I, I would actually be fine with that. So let me go ahead and share my screen again and then ask um, council member Willie if he'd be willing to make this modification. So I'll be typing here at this point, the meeting, no members of the public were present. And then Mayor Paul agreed with his concern and asked that the city manager bring back item at a duly noticed meeting. So, you know, I can go ahead and withdraw the motion on the table and put forth uh, this language here with the rest of the motion being identical to what was um, stated previously. And council member Willie, would you still second that as a- Yes, a I second. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and Madam City Clerk, I will go ahead and email you this language as well, um, you know, if this is approved. Um, Okay, so we have Vice Mayor Chow with her hand up. Vice Mayor Chow. Um, so that meeting was not recorded either, right? I don't know. Was that meeting, was our workshop recorded? It was, I believe, was for the purposes of retention, our standard 30-day retention policy. The way we're, we are not planning to publish the recording. It was not broadcast or, right. Yeah, I'm not comfortable with that. I know it's a tradition of the Portino City to have this goal setting meeting in a hotel, not broadcasted mm -hmm. because it wasn't held in the council chamber. Um, but this is an important meeting. I don't understand why we don't broadcast report it for the public, especially this time no one was able to attend. Um, so at least going forward, um, I hope that we do this go for set goal setting session with the recording and broadcast to the public. Mm. Should we put that in the minutes that this was not recorded or broadcasted? To be clear, um, I mean I, I'm 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 a little bit more reticent to put that in. I mean. It's um, because then we would probably need to include the nuance of, of the fact that it was in fact recorded, right? It wasn't broadcast, that's true. Well, actually it was, wasn't it? it didn't members of the public have access to um, the, the Zoom information to you know, look in on the meeting? Sure, it was publicly yeah. available, it just wasn't broadcast. Right, it wasn't broadcast on our city channel or, but I, I, What I meant is the public won't be able to find the recording in the city website um, at all. So right, on our YouTube channel or on, uh, on cable, that's true. And that was intentional. Yeah, I mean. That's the tradition. 
if if you like, I can you know let me go ahead and share the screen again. Um, we can after this sentence at this point in the meeting, no members of the public were present. Um, the meeting was not broadcast. Um, uh, on, broadcast on the city website, city channel, and then keep the rest of it the same. Um, Should we say following the tradition of? Um, following the tradition of what? Of go setting meeting in the past, right? Um. Well, I, I didn't quite catch what you're saying. Following the tradition of, I'm sorry, what? Full city meeting in the past. Full full city oh, meeting. Oh, goal setting. Oh, goal setting meetings in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, let me. I'm going to go ahead and stop my share here, so we can have a discussion. Um, can I can I interject just a little bit here? Uh, well, let me let me let me let me respond to Vice Mayor Chow. I mean, the fact of the matter is, past meetings like this um, have been a bit of a hybrid in. You know, I, I speak with the institutional knowledge here because, you know, uh, 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 because of my seniority, right? Because this is the seventh year I've been here. Um, we, we have we have had an annual meeting traditionally, and it has been um, either about you know governance and best practices and or about this so-called goal setting process. But the uh, the, the 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 very long. Um, you know, task that, that, that you and I embarked on by Smear Chow over the course of the last couple of years was to try to align our commission activities and our committee activities with, with our work plan, okay? And so we've never had anything like that, um, you know, put forward in the city. The, the goal setting meeting has, has gone from fairly informal uh, to a, a formalized procedure. And so, um, the, to, to me, this was very clearly noticed as something where we're talking about a workshop, talking about, you know, essentially, you know, procedure and governance. It, it had nothing to do with the work plan items that we work on. I mean, this is a very broad-based set of items. Um, but, you know, respectfully, I think that adding these two sentences makes it very clear that our concern was that members of the public did not have access to this. Um, and so, you know, like, and again, respectfully, I, I think we're kind of, you know, in, in, in a point of excess, frankly, if, if we're going to, you know, start adding more nuance to this, because I, I think I think the point has been well made. Yeah, this time. that's fine. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. I and, agree with you. Yeah. And so what I'll do at this point is um, I'll put for, I'll, I'll withdraw the prior motion again, and um, yeah, put forward the uh, motion as you see it uh, on the screen with uh, all of the parts identical. Um, and, and so again, to recap, I'm asking that the city come back in our next agenda on our March 16th meeting um, and uh, re, re itemize this agenda as described here. Um, Council member, will, he, will you still second that motion? Yes, thank you. Okay, excellent. Um, are there any other comments from council at this point? Okay, seeing, oh, uh, Council yes. Member Way as yes. well as Council Member Moore. Uh, <laughs> Council Member Way. Um, yeah. yeah, so so my, my comment is, I think we're here to set the minutes straight that we did not actually go to the work plan, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Council Member Moore. Okay, so, and we were not discussing the work plan. We were not discussing um, uh, goal setting. Uh, if you bring back your um, your edits, it, it now actually, um, and, and you can explain to me, but um, it now actually reads as though the concern is that it wasn't broadcast, or it could be you were concerned that no members of the public were present, or you could be concerned about, uh, you know, something else in there. So what, what, what is the concern that um, Mayor Paul is agreeing with? Um. Well, well, Council Member War, you're the one who suggested adding the sentence at this point in the meeting, no members of the public were present. Right. Um, and then and then Vice Mayor Chow indicated that we should point out, you know, since you're pointing out that no members of the public were present, we should point out that this is not broadcast in the city website or city channel. Um, and so I guess to answer your question, what we could do, uh, because this is what happened, I agreed with the concern 
regarding notice. Thank you. And ask that the city manager bring back the item at a duly noticed meeting. So um, let, let, let's do that. Vice Mayor, um, I'm sorry, Council Member Willie, would you be willing to second uh, the language as uh, placed here? Yes, I will. Thank okay, you. Great. Uh, any other concerns, Councilmember Moore? Uh, uh, yes, in, in the future, I uh, for um, these meeting minutes, if possible, I would like to have the the author um, identified, and uh, and also going through the the packet because I'm downloading the, the packet. Uh, um, it, it would have, it would help if the agenda item was put in the footnote uh, of these pages or you know header footer anywhere um, so that I can keep you know item ten together, item nine together. These things have like several parts to it, um, just for um, uh, for our bookkeeping purposes and, and note taking. Um, that would help as well. Great. Right. Um, okay. Uh, let me let me just okay. Let me close out the comments after Vice Mayor Chow uh, has her commentary. Um, Vice Mayor Chow. Um, I just want to say that if it adds confusion, you can remove the addition about the meeting is not broadcasted. Um, because my intention was so that the public know we didn't broadcast, it was following the tradition of a workshop tonight. Um, but if it, that adds a confusion, then it's okay to strap that whole second. Um, you know, I, I think we've clarified it, frankly. I mean, yeah. if no one else has any concerns about that, I, I know I don't as the person who brought the motion. Um, but, but thank you for that comment. Uh, one, one more item, actually, and um, thanks for bearing with me. This is based upon um, Councilmember Moore's comment. I, I would like to add to my motion that we identify the author of the minutes um, in the draft minutes since we're bringing them back. And Councilmember Willie, uh, would you bear with me one last time and second that? Yes, uh, I will. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very, very much. And um, I know I did close it off, but we did change the motion. If anyone has any other comments, you know, feel free to raise your hand. Um, but, you know, again, um, you know, I think this is very important. I mean, this our, our work plan goes to the heart of what we are um, doing as a, as a council in conjunction with our uh, commissions and committees. And it's, it's just so incredibly important that we properly notice the public of it. Um, Okay, so Madam City Clerk, if you would please um, conduct a roll call vote for the motion. Council Member Moore? Aye. Council Member Way? Aye. Council Member Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Great, thank you very much. Our next item is our second study session of the evening, but this one on our regular agenda. Um, and as uh, prefaced, this is the review of our council goals our city work program updates, and the proposed draft of fiscal year 2021 to 2022 city work program. And uh, Madam City Manager, uh, would you please uh, introduce the presentation? Okay, can everybody see my screen? Uh, yes, we can. Does it look like it's um, slideshow? Let's see. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Okay, so um, I'll just launch right into it. Um, this is our strategic planning workflow. And normally speaking, what would happen is that we would have that goal setting session separately. Uh, last one we had was in the community center in that U-shaped format a year and a half ago or so. And I just wanted to mention that I truly hope that this year in 2021, is a bit of an aberration having to kind of move through this in a different way. Uh, I, it's not my favorite thing to change a process right when it's brand new. So just to remind everybody, we're in this um, blue uh, box where we're talking about the city's work program. We have been receiving commission input from their meetings in December through February. A reminder of the council goals set last time that are typically set for, with well, maybe minor adjustments, but typically set for three to five years in that you can't make progress on these larger items without 
accomplishing you know several programs underneath those um, council goals and they're pretty hefty goals and many meaningful goals for the community. Um, in FY the FY 2019 2020 items delayed by COVID. If you'll recall um, the last time we did this about a year ago, uh, we had the 1920, I mean the previous work program items that were uh, delayed altogether. We have completed some of those and we still have some in progress. Uh, they are all expected to complete this fiscal year. So we've completed um, some of the, you know, Lawrence Mitty, um, which I knew was important to the council, uh, short-term rental ordinance and what's in progress and some uh, continuing on use of athletic fields, our dark sky and bird safe design, which you'll see on the 16th, and then kind of an ongoing um, item for me is the workforce planning piece. As we move into the 2020-2021 work program, I want to call your attention to these two columns, and I'll call your attention when it changes. We've completed some items, and then we have some in-progress items that are scheduled to complete this fiscal year. Uh, certainly the commissioner handbook that the uh, mayor mentioned, uh, we have finished. Um, we've reviewed our property tax share. We've had um, uh, our transportation to and from service in the form of VIA that have all completed um, in progress. And we still think we can complete them in this fiscal year is the Bollinger Road Safety Study, um, Emergency Services, Continuity of Operations, and our housing survey. Um, again, we still have, uh, this is where the, the uh, categories start to change a bit. Um, we still have in progress to, that we expect to complete this year. And you'll see an item on today's uh, agenda later on, on secondhand smoke, um, a pilot for the online store. Um, we think we can still finish it this year. Uh, marketing pro programs to assist small businesses. That's almost continuing in this COVID environment in a lot of ways. Um, and of course, you've seen the first uh, blush at the general plan authorization process and the current direction to bring it back to council with some uh, feedback. Um, in progress and will continue in operations is of course, engaging our philanthropic organizations and our strategic plan for parks and recreation. Now, these are the ones that are called this next category, uh, in progress or to be carried over means we can't finish this fiscal year. So these are the items that I'm calling council's attention to. Um, affordable housing strategies. Oops, I'm sorry, just messed that up. I've really messed it up. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay, I apologize, here we are. Um, to be carried over to fiscal year FY, uh, fiscal year 22, um, we obviously have some things to do with the RENA. Study sessions are coming. Again, to be carried over, our leadership program, which was previous called, previously called Leadership 95014, uh, Blackberry Farm Golf Course, addressing that, pollution monitoring, Rancho Rinconada, which we just talked about um, in the first study session, our um, pilot for water scheduling based moisture content, our shuttle bus pilot program, and study session on regulating diversified retail. Just to name a few. New items proposed for the fiscal year 22 city work program is basically an assessment for the city streetlights transition. Uh, a renaming of the Fine Arts Commission as recommended by the Fine Arts Commission. Uh, they would like to change their name to be more reflective of their charter. Uh, per personal preparedness campaign recommended by the Public Safety Commission. <clears throat> In there, we will include, of course, the revamping of the Block Leader a Neighborhood Watch Program. Uh, the Traffic Garden as recommended by the Bicycle Pedestrian Pro uh, Commission. Uh, Vision Zero and the New City Seal or logo. Um, I have some suggestions from uh, council members. Um, homelessness to continue to address that. 
uh, revamping the block leader program and as mentioned, included as part of the preparedness program uh, to provide for and prepare for a hybrid Zoom slash in-person environment when, when we're allowed to do so. Um, tying heights to density bonus to be included in our density bonus ongoing work. And um, the SB35 mixed use item. Uh, also to mention that uh, that were suggested by, by council members, but because these two items had already appeared on a work program in some form was the online store and the city logo um, also suggested by members of council. So to review kind of how our work goes, we have uh, a good portion, obviously the majority of our work is in operations, providing services to the public, such as you know, inspections, permitting, um, obviously all the work we do in public works to keep the road safe and the everything trimmed and looking good in the city and safe. Um, we also have the work program that is uh, adopted by council in this process. And of course, a little bit of organization and strategy staff. What has happened in COVID is um, exactly what one council member mentioned to me is we had a big unplanned work program item called COVID-19, which basically prevented us from doing a lot of things. Um, I'm very proud of the staff for having figured out how to deliver public services uh, pretty smoothly throughout the pandemic and at the beginning. Um, and we've just had a lot of work associated with COVID-19 as I've discussed with council prior. Um, and so I've been asked to kind of list those things that are unanticipated um, caused by COVID-19. We have an estimated 32,000 hours that we've worked on that from March to December of 2020. And then we had some items and requests that we worked on for that uh, fiscal year um, that uh, was about 3,000 hours from that same time frame that are either not on the work program or came over the dais in um, council action. And so that, that's together about 35,000 hours. Um, so here we are, we're back here. Um, and the next steps will be for us to bring uh, whatever back to the city council meeting, um, either March 16th or early April. I also wanted to spend a moment talking to, to thank the commissions and the council for um, metering their appetite for new items this year. Um, we asked them to, do, I've asked you all to do that and uh, really appreciate the somewhat of the relief that it brings for all of us um, while we're adding, you know, five new pro projects onto the, the work program that I think we can handle. And that's the end of my presentation. Uh, great. Thank you very much, Deb. We have a uh, hand raised from council member Moore. Sure. Okay. Um, so, uh, I was wondering, um, well, first, ordinarily, this would be a, a uh, as we kind of mentioned during uh, doing the minutes over, um, that this would ordinarily be a, uh, a several hour um, project of, uh, which I believe would include some prioritization. And I think we maybe have an hour allocated to this. Uh, so I have that question, but first, if, if someone, and it might be um, um, Katie Namura, if, if someone could just kind of walk me through these uh, items, A, B, C, and D, um, in, in uh, the attachments, um, for this item, and uh, you know what what the difference is between each, um, because I'm I'm actually finding a little bit confusing when I look at the staff report um, versus what's in these attachments, and um, you know where where the public should be looking, where we should be looking in order to come up with some some uh, order of of these items. Any sure. any help uh, plowing through all this stuff. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Katie Nomura, assistant to the city manager. So in attachment A, you have the current year, so fiscal year 2021 work program uh, dashboard updates. So these are the updates to the current year work program. Um, we normally give an update during this process and we've also been asked to give quarterly updates. So this would be the Q2 update. 
And in attachment B, uh, Deb had gone over items that were delayed due to COVID from the fiscal year 1920 work program. And so that is what is in attachment B. So the updates on those and where those are at. Attachment C contains uh, the commission proposals for the city work program that were considered and they're marked, ones that were included are marked with one asterisk and those that will uh, be taken on operationally or taken on as part of operations or ongoing work uh, have two asterisks. And attachment D is the proposed new work program for fiscal year 21 22. Okay, um, thank you, Katie. And so it seems like some of the um, commission suggestions did get put onto the proposed 21 22 list. Okay, so and how did that? How did that get decided or was that, did that come to city council and city council agreed to certain items to add on um, like, uh, oh gosh, vision zero. Um, so that the, this is the consideration of that. Uh, we're bringing it to council for consideration. Uh, these were determined through evaluation of bandwidth and staff and what what is doable in a year, given all the other work that's going on. And these were the items that were seen as something we should put in as recommended to go into the work program. Of course, the work program is not adopted. Uh, if the council wishes to change any of these, remove or add any of these, uh, that can be done at this time. Okay, and, and then I'm also curious, is there, any, is there any reason why we could or could not um, hold another Saturday session where we do a work plan item over over a three hour period where we get to dig into all this? Or um, is there some reason why we need to be um, coming up with uh, with the answer in, in uh, now less than an hour? Um, no, no, this is definitely, so to answer your previous questions is typically you're right. It's, you know, probably a couple of two hour meetings or three hour meetings where we sit around, we present the items uh, by goal, um, and you may or may not have attended those where council then determines a prioritization or they ask questions and then they make a determination and uh, city staff takes in, you know, we take in the um, feedback. Um, it was thought that perhaps because we had all of these items on the 2021 work program that were prioritized last time that we are not going to complete this year. My thought, perhaps erroneously, is that those continue to be your priorities, even though we've had COVID, and that we could just make this a two-year work program. We certainly can either schedule a special session or do something else to kind of follow up the discussion that we start here. But at some point, we will have to close it so it all kind of, if you look at the, if I put the flow diagram back up, it'll then have to dovetail kind of into our budget discussions because they kind of go together. Yeah, maybe you should put that back up uh, to, to clarify sure. where we are in this process. Sure. Thanks. Okay. And if you could, yeah, do uh, make yeah, up the I'm slideshow good. that you had. I'm doing it. I'm just slow. <laughs> oh, no worries. No. Sorry to hurry. There you go. All right. Great. Um, okay. You'll be able to see that. Okay. So we have um, a strategic planning session, which is, is that what you're describing this study session as the strategic planning session? Yes. I mean, it's the start of it because normally what we do is we'd back it up a little bit into, you know, last month, say for example, where we would, you would adopt your goals after discussing them, and then you would go right into talking about all of those projects that fit underneath those goals. And okay. so um, that's where we, we currently are. We can certainly, of course, with uh, you and I can decide how to uh, arrange those if a subsequent discussion needs to happen. I was maybe perhaps trying to eliminate um, a bunch of kind of that churn work, but if you want to do it, we can do it. Well, I, I think, you, you know, it's, it's very well noticed uh, to the public that you're getting input from us at this point. Uh -huh. it, it does seem like it, it would be constructive for us to have 
a, a, a future session not too far off in the future to consolidate that input as well as from the public um, and, and bring this back for uh, what we would call a, um, what, we, what we've called in the past a, um, uh, a, 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 a goal setting meeting. We, we've called that the goal setting yeah. meeting, but yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's sort of a different process that we're adopting here. Um, yeah, it's, un it's unfortunate, you know, we, um, and maybe we should have just planned for a full up process, but we didn't, so. No, I, I think you were actually accurately describing it because, you know, off to the left, you have that red box that has commission input from December through February. And, and I will say, you know, as a matter of historical fact, we have never done that. We have never systematically gone to all of our commissions and committees and asked them specifically what they want to work on. Yeah, we have. We did that. This is our second time through that we've done that. The first time we actually executed this new process for the city. That's the. I think the first time we we did it. Right. Uh, so that was that was in the, the I guess the start of the COVID year, and then correct. Of, yeah. of course, you know we got we all got hit by that, and so I, I, I guess I guess more accurately, this is the first time we've seen it in a in, in a bit of a quasi normal process. Correct. So quasi normal. So, this is quasi normal. <laughs> Yeah. So, so let's um, let, let's see if Councilmember Moore has any more questions to wrap up. I, I see you put your hand down. Um, <clears throat> yes. Uh, so, that, just to reiterate what you're saying, um, Mayor Paul, is that we are just now seeing the, the commission input, and and yet it seemed like some of these items got put onto the proposed uh, um, 21-22 um, work plan in the in our attachment D. So, um, which to my understanding, we council did not make those choices. That those were staff suggestions, and I would have rather, if that's the case, I would have rather seen that as the list of of items that, that you know the staff had a suggestion because it looks as though when I'm reading it is that we've already made a choice, um, and so that that I'd like some clarification on. Also, um, going back to the the session that we had in February, the February sixth session, um, I think that should be uh, backed up in the timeline um, uh, because it's about uh, clarifying roles and governance. That that we could have used that session even even earlier. I think, um, and and so so next year, um, you know, we can make this make the process go a little bit um, more smoothly yeah usually uh council member Moore, we have that workshop following the new mayors and council members academy and so your academy was late january and that's why this one was timed february um well i don't know we'll necessarily that it needs to time. yeah so next year we won't have that is, is that an well is this an annual um uh, kind of a, it was kind yes. of like a group session. I don't know what to call it. Yes. You mean the mayors and um, the new mayors and council members academy? No, the, no. The session, the workshop that we had on the 6th. The workshop uh, is annual. Okay. So I, it could be that in off years when there isn't an election and, and we're not seating new council members that the work plan and that, um, that session could be grouped together because we will have been working together for a year or who knows, maybe, maybe we need a, it'll be the opposite. Um, but yeah, that could be thought about as, as it approaches and we could have it discussed like in December, it's coming up. We need to have the session in and, and figure out how we're going to do the work plan and um, the, the group um, session. Uh, yeah. And I'd like to clarify that this, um, this product that we're bringing you today is a proposed it is council this is now when council deliberates on it so we're not making any staff is making recommendations or put things on the program that we thought we could accomplish that were requested by the commissions and this is for you all to consider that's that's how it's usually done okay well uh let me as a as a, as a matter of process before we go to council member way who's patiently had her hand up for for a while now um l let me let me just you know, kind of interject there on the process question. Our February 6th meeting, I think it could very legitimately have been a work plan uh, related meeting. It's just that we didn't put that on our agenda as such, right? And so, you know, if we were to do this again, um, you, you know, there could be a new mayor every year, right? I mean, so that, that workshop is legitimate for us even in a non-election year. 
So um, it, it's one of those things where if we have this workshop and work plan, then um, if we had if we had done that properly uh, almost a month ago now, then we I think would we we would be legitimately more into a uh, a decisional posture right now. But you know truly this is a first impression uh, of council at this point because you know as we described it in the last item, uh, it, it really was like that, right? I mean if you'll recall, City Manager Fung, what happened was that you started on it. Maybe those slides got showed really quickly. But you know, I, I was I was pretty quick on it, right? I mean, it was it was one of those situations where, you know, I, I very clearly stated, yes, that's that's true, and this has not been noticed, um, and I think it took all of us by surprise. And it doesn't sound like anything willful was happening. It was just one of those things that, you know, it just happened. Yeah, just and you're right. So that. this would be the right. first knowing, right? This so 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 the procedural point is just this. I think we probably need to put in another session. Um, you know, sometime, I, I think in the latter part of March, um, maybe, you know, we can take a look at the March 16th agenda as well. But, you know, the way I view this, this is a matter of first impression. We have a lot of good consolidated information, but again, it is a lot of, you know, information and it's our first impression. And so what I would like to ask our council to do, we're in the process of asking the questions of your presentation, but once we hear back from our public um, during the deliberative process, I think, it would be a good idea to um, gather some of those initial impressions, right? So I'll just give you an example. For me, Lawrence Mitty is really important. I'm gonna talk about Lawrence Mitty a bit, right? Um, and, and so that's just an example without getting into the substance of it. So um, proceeding with the questions, I'll go over to Council Member Way and thank you for your continued patience. Councilman Thank you, Mayor Paul. Actually, your explanation helped me to, uh, to process this too. So when I look at the uh, a, B, C, D, and I thought it was pretty clear because the A is the current program 2020, 2021, what's happening right, right here? It is a, like a half year report. And the B is 2019, 2020, what hasn't been done? Those, those, those haven't been done. And then the C is the current commissioner's recommendations for our next year's 2021, 2022 recommendations from the commissioners. And the, the last D is the proposed, proposed plan from staff. I mean, it's just a proposed, right? So we get to see everything. So to me, I went every item and I, Mayor Paul, I agree with you. This is too short. This is your first impression, but I did write like you did. I wrote priority items. That's what I think is first priority. And then low priority items and back burners, things that are good, but we don't have time to do it. And then drops, some things maybe not eligible anymore, maybe COVID wipe it out, just drop it. So I had four, kind of put things into four categories. And I like to discuss with my fellow council members, oh, do we agree with this? What's in details? We can do it right here. I mean, it's just not enough time to do it. So I think a study session would work. But there is a time of essence. We are, you know, RENA session is coming. We got to do a lot of studies. So I think we should do this fast, get our priorities up so that staff can start to work and we can start to work with the real things that's important. Okay, great. Uh, appreciate that. W was there any um, kind of informational follow-up you wanted on on that council member way? Were you, were you asking any uh, clarifying uh, information? Because mm -hmm. I, I thought what you were saying was very, very... Um, uh, enlightening, you know, it's uh, helpful in our process, certainly. Um, and and I, I would say, just in response to what you're saying, um, even though you do have, you know, those four items, I don't think anything prevents you once we hear back from the public. Uh, Absolutely. Right? Because it's an opportunity to let, uh, to tell staff on a higher level, you know, these are my priorities. Um, and maybe that, you know, helps them reformulate when they bring back that information to us uh, in, in, in relatively brief order. So can I just add a couple more sentences? So oh, what sure. I did with agenda review is I went through every item with the staff because I some items I didn't understand it. So and then I you know I asked the staff opinions and then I put my own look at it. Or that's how I got into my first priority, low priority, back burner, and uh, you know drop off. But that doesn't mean they're all right. So I need to work with my council fellow members and and maybe the residents to come up with uh, the final version of it. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, Vice Mayor Chow, you have your hand raised. Uh, any clarifying questions of, of staff at this point? Uh, and you are muted, Vice Mayor Chow. 
Mm. Let me try to unmute you, Vice Mayor Chow. Sorry. So there was an item that um, seems to be missing. Um, I find that it, it, I did find it in the 2019 20 uh, work program. It's called Consider New Commissions and Committees. I remember we had this item in 2019, and then it was continued to 2021. And last year, when the former mayor, Stephen Scharf, considered a, 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 a restructure of bike path commission, at that time, I remember we didn't consider that because we thought that should be considered as part of this general item when we consider a new commission already find roles, the responsibility of the current commissions. For example, under consideration were traffic, transportation, and the community engagement, and the economic development. So this okay. item... This item is here. It. It. Is it? Yes, it is. It's on one of the first pages for the 1920, right after my slide on council goals. Um, it is the number one item in progress, and it's almost done. Also, so we will see that coming. Yes. Okay. Shortly. Shortly. Somehow I missed that. Okay. But I think I think you might be right in the sense that it should have been on the attachment B. I think perhaps when we converted to PDF, it might have gotten cut off. So we can uh, update that. Mm, okay. I guess I was couldn't. Yeah. Somehow I yeah missed couldn't find it. Okay. Good. Another question is rich in terms of. Uh, Budget. I looked at the. At, this is attachment A, where we have. I see this plot price tag, um, like two million dollars, for. For targeting marketing to assist small business, two million dollars. Am I reading that right? Um, for example, let me find. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, the single use. Plastic ordinance, that's another $2 million. And we have Bollinger Row study, $2 million. Oh, it looks like a cut and paste error. That's what it looks like. So they all are $2 million. No, they're exactly the same amount. So it looks like a cut and paste error. I apologize. For okay, that. good. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, that's I a lot of money. Yeah, that, yeah, I was like, how come these are all $2 million? <laughs> that looks so like was, a cut and paste error in the format. And I apologize for that. We'll make that Oh, correct. good. So, um, yeah, I was looking at the 2020 work program. They are like 35,000 or 45,000 or 100,000. Okay. Things have gotten very expensive, apparently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In uniform. Okay. Good catch. Thank you. Um, All right. Okay. Thanks, Vice Mayor Chow. Yeah. Um, oh, did you have more questions? Uh, no. Okay. Um, Vice Mayor, uh, uh, Councilman Moore, I think, I think, You've had the opportunity to ask. I want to go to vice, uh, everyone's the vice mayor, uh, council member Willie, um, to see if he has questions uh, before we circle back around. No clarifying questions. Uh, more or less, I gave, you know, this a lot of attention. And so my comments will be under our deliberation because um, it's not clarifying. So... I'll, okay, I'll great. You. Thank you for observing that. I really appreciate it. Um, okay. Uh, well, Councilmember Moore, I was going to circle back to you, but your, your camera's off and your hand's down. Vice Mayor Chow, your hand is still um, up. Did you want to I, ask another question? Yeah, can I ask more? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so for the proposed items from the commission, I see that Public Safety Commission proposed uh, uh, an item on vehicular burglary. And that's not marked as one star or two star. So are they not supposed to even study that? Because I know the commission is studying that and the public, uh, the residents have been asking about uh, breaking, car breakings. And so if the council directs to yeah, add that, it to the work program, it can be. So the, so the staff recommendation right now is not including that item. And does that mean the commissioners cannot even on their own work, work on these items? I, I, I believe it's because the sheriff's department does that research as a matter of work. 
They it look wasn't at marked the even ways two star as operational item. Uh, maybe uh, uh, we'll observe that um, Tom okay. Chen, our um, emergency services coordinator, has turned his camera on. Did you want to speak to Vice Mayor Chow's question, Tom? Yeah, the, the catalytic converter general theft of vehicular burglaries category is generally talked about during uh, most all of our meetings. In fact, the commission has asked Captain Urena to bring regular uh, reports on theft to the commission so they can study and see the impacts that any of our efforts for public safety uh, have on it. However, to the projects that were specifically identified in order to address this item, such as convening business owners through a forum to collect feedback and to conduct a pilot project with, with smart cities, um, it's a little bit outside our, our ability to manage at this point um, and less directed by the council. Okay. So this is uh, on the screen I shared in the last row is the item I'm talking about. Uh, so the staff could not currently support this item unless the council direct them to. So this item proposed is uh, convene pop business owners through a forum to collect feedback and uh, provide best practices and gain collective buy-in conduct a pilot project with smart cities regarding residential crime. So the title is Catholic Converter General Theft Vehicular Burglaries. So um, I, I would, it sounds like a process question to me, Vice Mayor Chow. So yeah. you know, l let, me, okay. let me just reiterate what, what I was saying before. I, I think we have an opportunity to um, identify our, our priorities once this comes back to us uh, after public commentary on this. And so I, I would just like to provide that opportunity for each of our council members, once that happens, uh, to identify what they have as priorities that may be uh, not in alignment with what the defaults are here so that uh, staff can take that back as guidance um, in, in terms of trying to um, re reflect that on the next iteration that we'll be considering and I believe that should happen in March, you know, just basically to catch us up to the process that we're, we're, we're admittedly a little bit behind on because we didn't formally or in any way, you know, consider the work plan prior to this. Can I ask one more clarifying question? Sure, so please. This is the Housing Commission proposed. So the first item is uh, on something, I think the commissioner wants to help the city identify land for affordable housing. I guess the staff does not recommend that. Should I ask why? And then I'd like to ask the third item. It's uh, marked as two stars. That means it will be incorporated as part of the operation. This item is to engage philanthropic organization to find a way to build moderate income. I think the staff kind of have this in the operation, but it hasn't really, um, so I, don't know why that cannot be an item that the commission works on. So to answer your question on the uh, subcommittee to identify land, um, that's the beginning of the government procurement process. And so that is uh, something that the city staff should be doing. Um, and we do do that. We look at mm -hmm. properties that are for sale um, in the entire city uh, for suitability for affordable housing. Um, and then your second question is um, the philanthropic one, uh, Vice Mayor. Mm -hmm. Engage with philanthropic organizations to find a way to build uh, moderate housing, moderate price housing, sorry. I have that in my, uh, it, it will continue in operations, but um, that's kind of a continuous thing. Yes, yeah, so commission wants to help. My understanding is the uh, housing commission meant some, two of them at least are realtors, and then they they have an intention to help us identify this process. I know the staff are look on the look, but why don't we allow the commissioners to help also? Since this is what city staff is doing anyway, and the same thing for the third item. Affordable housing strategy. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm going to read that in as a little bit more of commentary at this point, Vice Mayor Chow. Okay. I, I think uh, your question was well taken, 
and I think you did get an answer from staff. Let's relegate our follow-up to commentary uh, after we hear uh, from the public. Did you have any other um, you know, broad-based questions or you know, topics that you wanted to cover in the clarification um, portion of our discussion here? Any other general clarifying questions? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a no. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So let's go to members of the public at this point. We do have one hand raised from Jennifer Griffin and just um, reminding people by the time that Jennifer uh, finishes her comments, you'll need to have your hands up uh, in order to be placed on the list. And um, Jennifer, welcome, followed by Alongo and Peggy, uh, Alongo Ganga and Peggy Griffin. Uh, thank you, Mayor Darcy. Hi, I'm Jennifer Griffin. Um, and I think you, I sent you all an email about kind of about item nine, because I was sort of confused, but I, I think I'm sort of getting the gist of it. I'm, I think that this, I mean, believe me, after having doing things with this city, city council meeting since 2003, um, I'm very familiar with the goal setting um, and the long, long meetings that we've had on the, uh, the agenda item, I'm sorry, the number nine items, uh, what do you call it, the city work program. And I'm, I, I think that this is supposed to be that one, which is normally three to four hours. So I'm still a little bit confused about what exactly we're doing here because this is, I don't know if this is the, the equivalent of the one that we did in um, Quinlan Center last year that was several hours. They, is this the equivalent to the one that we did in the hotel, the two different hotels? But the, that was kind of like goal setting and an agenda. So, yes, I think that, the, and I have never heard of Vision Zero. I, you know, that's, I think that's that thing that they have in San Francisco where they close roads. So I, I think we need to have a special long meeting. They're long, the three to four hours. The longest was eight hours. That was probably 12 years ago. So we need to drill down through this stuff. It can't be, it can't be rushed. Believe me, the Rena stuff is going to be as bad as anything this year that we have gone through. I am not looking forward to that. And that's going to take up a lot of time. Um, but we have to drill through this stuff because I'm very, very concerned with things like Vision Zero suddenly appearing on the agenda and the public has no comprehension what they are. Um, I, I also, I appreciate your uh, the situations with the Rancho Rinconada Special District. That takes a, you know, I'm very concerned about that um, because that's part of my neighborhood, my infrastructure. Um, but yes, but Vision Zero, I don't know what that is. What are these people trying to do? Are they gonna try to close roads in Cupertino? We know, need to know about that. That Bollinger Road study, we have to remember that the south side of, of Bollinger Road could be up zoned to four units of housing by San Jose in June, and we could wind up with solid high density housing along the south side of Bollinger Road. So that Bollinger Road survey may wind up being $2 million. We need to remember that. Plus, we have an urban village going on down Bollinger Road in San Jose. So Yes, it takes time. I've sat through these meetings. They cannot be rushed. And we have to do due diligence with Rena because we are fighting against overbearing. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, that is your three minutes. And our um, remaining speakers are Ilango Ganga, Peggy Griffin, Connie Cunningham, and Lisa Warren. Welcome, Ilango. Yes, uh, this is Elango Ganka. Are you able to hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So, um, uh, thank you, con uh, Council Members. Uh, so, uh, I am uh, part of the Bicycle Pedestrian Commission, but today I am speaking on behalf of myself. Um, I echo some of the comments that was uh, raised by, uh, you know, the previous uh, uh, commenter uh, Jennifer Griffin, as well as some of the Council Members that we need to have a, you know, much longer session where individual items needs to be explained to the public, as well as on each of the sections, public was allowed to make comments in the past. So it's not just like three minutes for, you know, all of it. 
uh, which is uh, which doesn't uh, do service for us to provide comments. So specifically, I'm going to talk about uh, two of the items. One of them is Vision Zero. Um, this was actually presented uh, uh, to the uh, Bicycle Pedestrian Commission. There was a lengthy discussion on this topic as well. Um, I can refer that presentation and minutes for that session uh, for people who wanted to know about it. The, the idea is to, to bring uh, the fa fatal uh, traffic fatalities and uh, serious injury collisions uh, to zero. Um, so that's the, uh, basically to increase the safety of all modes of transportation, including uh, the bicycle and pedestrian safety. Uh, so that's basically the gist of it. But you know, there's a lot of information uh, that we need to discuss. Um, and this was uh, this item subsumes actually three uh, work, work program items. Two of them from the Bicycle Pedestrian Commission. One is the school uh, safety, um, as well as uh, as well as the Vision Zero uh, policy development itself. And there was also a technology uh, component to it, which was related to Vision Zero that was also developed by the TIC Commission. So all three of them are combined as this Vision Zero uh, item here. Um, it's a good program. I think I strongly support that one. And it was voted by the uh, you know, Bicycle Pedestrian Commission as uh, one of the uh, program items. And I thank the staff and the city management for putting forward uh, in, in their recommendations as well. So the uh, neighboring cities like you know, Sunnyvale, San Jose, Mountain View, all of those cities have adopted and they're working on various phases of implementation. Now, coming back to the second uh, item uh, on the traffic garden, um, this item, I just wanted to clarify that this item was not recommended by the Bicycle Pedestrian Commission. Um, it is not included in the list of items that is already, you know, it's there in the attachment uh, C. So it's not there. I think that needs to be corrected both in the staff report as well as in the city manager's presentation, which uh, she made earlier. Um, so this was uh, presented uh, to the commission. Uh, it's a more of a nice to have program, but no formal action was taken on this one. Um, I think uh, it, it involves you know, uh, having a, procuring a land or maybe using an existing land um, as well as it will be a co co capital intensive program. Uh, I don't think it, uh, you know, our city can afford this one. This requires to be developed at the regional level. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, a lot of funding is needed. I think those funds need to be reserved for other priority one projects in tier one, like you know, Stevens Creek Boulevard, uh, you know, bike projects and so on. So with that, I think my time is up. And so I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Alongo. And I commit to you, I will pronounce your last name correctly next time, Ganga. Okay. Uh, our next speaker is Peggy Griffin, followed by Connie Cunningham, uh, followed by Lisa Warren. Welcome, Peggy. Good evening, Mayor Paul, Vice Mayor Chow, council members and staff. Um, I agree with Jennifer Griffin and Alongo that you need to take extra time. Um, these, what's showing right now is what you have in, two, in 2020, the goals. And I don't see any kind of, I don't want you to have those goals. And I know that you guys have different priorities now. A lot has changed this year. Um, could you scroll down, uh, Kirsten, please? I would recommend you take more time and focus on setting new goals. This has been a really weird year and a lot has happened. Redo the goals, remove. I would rather you not spend money redoing all the trucks and cars and the, yeah. the statue and put it in something like 5G. I would rather you not spend time on the online store for trinkets with coffee cups and t-shirts and put it in saving residents or advocating to the utility companies. We've got this huge water uh, bill coming that they wanna propose. Please help us fight it as a city. Um, represent your, re your residents. Um, impacts to businesses, money spent there instead of the logo or the store. Um, access to parks and rec at five o'clock or four o'clock, people come out of their houses like roaches and they, they look for places to walk and exercise and take their kids. So that has become a higher priority thing these days. So please take more time, just like everyone else has said, and, and set your priorities for a new year. Thank you. All right, thank you, Peggy. Our next speaker uh, is Connie Cunningham, followed by Lisa Warren. With apologies to Tessa Parrish, um, if your hand wasn't up by the last uh, part of the first commenter, uh, we're not calling. And so, Connie, you're next. Welcome. Oh, 
Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members again. Um, I did want to um, echo the concerns that were brought up already. Um, one on, um, I'm speaking not for the Housing Commission, but as myself only, but nevertheless, I was there when we set our goals. The location not being there, um, it was very much um, something that we were interested in because of finding locations for affordable housing is something that's been mentioned on a variety of times by a variety of people like the county, for instance, uh, when we were asked what the city could do was to find a location for affordable housing. The second thing that I was concerned about, not not yet worried, but the ELI for DDD, uh, for uh, disadvantaged people, uh, it's been on the uh, commission's work for two years and now it ends. And I'm not sure if that means, yay, we've got it and we just haven't seen it yet on our um, Housing Commission uh, workload, or if for some reason it's falling off. And uh, um, uh, Planning Commissioner uh, Scharf was at our um, commission meeting and he specifically said that the city council and he were still very interested in ELI. So I just wanted to bring that up and, and express my concern and hope that that can continue on the work pro program. I did want to say I saw and was very appreciative of the climate change 2.0 being on the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the work plan, um, the carbon neutral portion of it is very important uh, to wildlife and uh, biodiversity because uh, it, it, it increases the canopy in the city, which reduces carbon uh, in the environment. Um, and when we in increase the trees, uh, then you're gonna increase the wildlife. It's gonna be healthier in general for the, for the city and for the inhabitants. So that that completes my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Connie. Our next and last speaker is Lisa Warren. Welcome, Lisa. Okay. Um, so I I guess I'm just going to echo what at least four people have said, and, and I might add that normally when this kind of item is being discussed, you would have more than five, six people wanting to speak. So it tells me there's not even enough people attending this meeting. To, anyway, I'll echo that I think it needs more time. I, I've heard two, three council members say that already before deliberation. So I don't think that's going to be an issue with agreeing to that. It's just a matter of when and how you do it. Um, and it, I just wanted to make a comment about videoing, recording the what is typically the goal setting slash work plan session, which is, as many people have said, hours long normally. And maybe that's changing, but it's probably a bad year to change that. Um, I think it was 2017, I'm pretty certain, because they weren't typically recorded, there was a group of residents that needed it recorded it and had to do it themselves with permission. So there was permission to record, but the city wasn't going to do it. And that was held at the Aloft Hotel for several hours that year, and residents recorded it. So it would be nice if they were recorded. Um, so I... I said before tonight, another item that I I see this year because of the weird year as being a year that priorities may change or, and, and I actually agreed with some of Peggy's suggestions. It may seem, I mean, you want to have a little fun too. And, and Deb alluded to that with some of these programs to, you know, to get some fun back in the city, but not at the expense of, far more important things that have been on lists for years. So I, I would agree with a lot of what Peggy said about prioritizing. Um, and I, if this was going to be the session, I'm clearly not prepared to even give a whole lot of real input other than what I've just said now. So I do hope that there's a bigger chunk of time set aside to do that and, and that it's noticed in enough time for people to take a block of time out that's bigger than normal if they choose to. Um, that's it. 
All right, thank you, Lisa. Let's bring it back to uh, council. All right, so let's do this. I, I'm gonna set us to three minutes each uh, with our commentary, with the understanding that this is our initial impression of the work plan. And so um, I, I think it's pretty clear that we do need uh, a more specific session for uh, the purposes of delivering what people have commonly come to understand as a goal setting session. Um, that, that's what our history has been. And uh, it's completely justified because when you look at our workflow process for this particular uh, item, uh, we've skipped a couple of things. Um, it's been an unusual year, that's true. Uh, we missed February 6th, we really didn't get into it. And so this really is the first impression and we should have a proper goal setting session. So what I'd like to do is provide uh, council uh, initially with three minutes each to give your impressions. And hopefully, you know, staff is uh, taking notes on this uh, and copious notes on um, people's individual preferences. I won't be asking for a motion because I don't think we're going to get consensus at this point. Um, consistent with, you know, what the public and what our council has been saying and communicating in their clarifying questions as well. Um, we really just have uh, individual input provided at this point. And, you know, hopefully that will get incorporated into the structure of what we're presented in uh, the upcoming goal setting session. So would anyone like to go first? Um, by, by hands uh, and providing this, uh, uh, communicating this information. If not, and you'd like to, you know, kind of, um, you know, consider some of this as, as the rest of us are deliberating, I would be happy to uh, go first. Um, oh, I see Councilmember Way, you have your hand up as, as Vice Mayor Chow. So um, Councilmember Way, we'll have you go first. Thank you, Mayor Paul. So um, I think we, I really like what you repeat. This is the first impression. And I did go through almost every item with the city staff. And so, um, you know, what we need to do together is to come up with our consensus of what's prioritize, prioritizing. Our staff does have to do all the operations, you know, take care of our residents, take care of our city. And so the time for them to do work program is not a whole lot. So we need to find out priorities and then so we can move forward. And I think timing, again, I wanna say timing is very important because I think we need to start to move forward with our priorities. And as far as I understand, this is to set up our 21-22 work program. We already have our 2021, which I wasn't there, and then we're working on it, but we are gonna set up our 21-22 work program. And, and I think um, a good study session, but before that, we should all understand each project, you know, what is involved so that we understand what, what, they, who they, what they are and then so we can set up things and brainstorm and then exchange ideas and come up with a, 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 a set of priorities. I cannot emphasize enough, we need priorities. We need to have um, things that we need to be doing 21-22. And like our uh, comment, our resident said, it's important that we change our, I mean, we update our priorities. Doesn't have to be the 1920 that hasn't been done. Doesn't have to be the 2021 that's still in progress. We, we could adapt and, um, you know, find new priorities or, you know, if the ones that haven't been done, we think they're important enough, put them back. So that that's all I, I'm, I'm gonna say. Great, thank you, Council Member Wei. And um, you're done with about a minute 10 left. Our next um, comments are from Vice Mayor Chow. Hi, um, oh, did I unmute? Yeah. So one first question, there is was a slide, uh, items suggested by council members. So are those items already included in the proposed one from the staff or are they not? Katie, can you answer that question as to where we added it? Mm. Yes. So some of them are added and then some of them have not been added yet. Um, this is what I'm talking about. Right. So some are added, some are not. Because so homelessness is included. Revamping the block leaders is included under the preparedness campaign. The Zoom environment is going to be worked on for operations. Is that something that we'd have to do? What do you mean by Zoom environment? That you was the item. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you suggested that when we're allowed to get back in person, that we also want to uh, provide a Zoom environment 
so you can continue um, the public engagement piece that Zoom brings? Yeah. That's what you suggested. So that will be worked on operationally. We don't have to recommend that. Okay. So all of these items are already included. I just want to clarify that. Most of them are, I think, for the SB35 and mixed use. Um, we're hoping that council can speak to that more so that we can understand what the intent was and so we can figure out how to include it, if that's the desire of council. Yeah, we can get that mm -hmm. fleshed out. I'm not sure what that means either. So, right. Okay. So, so whoever proposed that something need to clarify, they may or may, may not be included, likely mostly are. So I think I agree that I don't think we should, this is the right time to work on CTCO. That was an intent before COVID. Now, since we are cutting staff and delaying projects, we shouldn't work on city staff, CTCO. And then the, oh, the online shop, the online stores, that was also an idea before COVID. Maybe that if we, if we don't have time, that's not a focus. And for Fine Arts Commission rename, I thought that's part of what we would consider this year when we are considering all the commissions and the structures and their roles. So I don't seconds, see vice vice why we should consider Fine Arts separately. And Traffic Garden, I think I would like to know more detail about that. Um, are we thinking maybe at Memorial Park? Because I know many residents want something to be done there. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor Chow. Would anyone like to go next? Um, Council Member Willie. <coughs> so, yeah, I'll go ahead and go next. Uh, is it okay if we share my screen? Uh, sure, you have to do that from your side, I think. Yeah, so are you seeing my screen? Yes, we are. Great. So um, I'll try and be uh, fairly quick uh, uh, with this. What, what I feel is most effective, at least for me, is to look at the last year's work plan and then build on it and use my thoughts to make it appropriate for this next year. So number one, public. I'm real glad that public engagement is the first category of our work plan. And so to me, we're missing something here, and that is our number, you know, one of our main reasons for being on this city council is for engaging with our residents, and yet we don't have sufficient staff support. So I would like, I suggest that we have a work plan item so that city staff is helping with our resident engagement activities, uh, coffee hours, uh, uh, park walks, round tables. So, so that's the one I want to add to uh, public engagement. Some of these I think are not that important, but public engagement is. Transportation, I think we've got a lot of smart people in Cupertino and traffic, congestion, and parking are important. And I think we need a commission uh, that has that as their focus, the local traffic, congestion, and uh, parking, and come back to us with their recommendations. So make it a, uh, a work plan item. Number three is housing, and there it is. And down at number seven, I see homeless services and facilities. I think that needs to be up here toward the top. If not number one, number two, Rena is very important. But then I really think it needs to be better defined that, you know, the city needs a program or a plan. How, uh, homelessness is not going to go away when the pandemic is over. And we need our city staff to be able to respond when a uh, camp opens up and they need to monitor them periodically and really. have a budget. And so I think we really need to revamp and move up this number seven. Uh, sustainability, 
Number two is the climate action plan. I feel that should be number one. Everything else under sustainability and stuff should be feeding into our climate action plan, whether it's single use plastics or water conservation. And so again, one of the important things is um, Councilman uh, Way said priorities. To me, priorities, number one. One is one, two is two, three is three. So I'd like to build our work plan with the priority being from the top down. So then we go to hey, Councilmember Wally, you're you're over time. Let me let me um, come back to you. Let me give Councilmember Moore the opportunity to to speak, and then I'll I'll give brief comments. Oh, okay. All right, thanks, uh, Councilmember Moore. <sighs> okay. Um, well, so when I'm listening to uh, Councilmember Willie, he's he's prioritizing, and. Uh, the issue I have with that is that I think if we're going to be prioritizing that we collectively come up with our methodology that we're going to be doing that uh, with um, and how we're going to be receiving input. And so I'm a little surprised to see that we're already moving on to that. Um, I do uh, note also uh, that what the vice mayor uh, commented on, which is the budgeting numbers um, in attachment A, those need to be corrected. It'll help us uh, come up with um, how we're prioritizing, I believe. Uh, we, I would like an item by item uh, review of what was in attachment D, including all of the commission suggestions and that of the council members. Most of them are in there, but not all of it. Um, I'm not sure about the two year extension um, on the one hand, and, and you know, if I look at the Regional Transformative Transit Projects Initiative, um, this is an impossible ask. Uh, you have Stevens Creek Corridor High Capacity Transit automate, Automated Fixed Guideway to Mountain yeah, View, Tino Station at I-2 Wolf Road, Highway 85 Transit Guideway, Silicon Valley High Capacity Transit Loop, and Item 6 Transit Update and Funding Strategies. This is this is huge, and as you know, we've got people, uh, council members on uh, BTA TAC, PAC. Um, we might have a citizens advisory committee and board. Uh, so I, I'm not really sure why this would be here. And while it's here, you can't finish this in two years. This is this is multi-year. This is uh, I don't un even understand how we could even do this in one year. Um, let's see. And I'd like there to, to for our session to be very educational for the for the public so that they know what these items are. You had the comment about the, the Vision Zero um, uh, program. So I, I hope we come back and uh, look at this again, and that we have a discussion about how we're going to prioritize these items. And 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 is there real wisdom in having a one-year work program, and when we know that some of these items are three to five years in the making, or even longer? Uh, you know how we know how slowly VTA moves. Um, so us coming up with suggestions uh, will be about as fruitful as the RFI that came out of San Jose for Stevens Creek Boulevard. Um, showing uh, projects, uh, suggestions that were even uh, not even uh, f feasible from the technology standpoint. So I, I hope that we schedule another meeting um, and we look at this again. I do not feel prepared to, to prioritize these items tonight at all. Great, well, thank you, Councilmember Moore. You're right on your uh, three minutes with about five seconds left. I'll, uh, I'll start my clock now. Um, I'm just making comments. I, I want to ask that we re-examine our characterization of the Lawrence Mini Project. Um, I believe that is attachment B. Um, I, I'd like to ask that Lawrence Mini be declassified as a complete project. Uh, I believe that the project objective is not just to acquire the land, but to develop a park. And, and, and so when I look at attachment B, it looks like this is done, we can kind of set it and forget it. And I just want to remind everyone that, you know, it's, it's really easy to get kind of lost in this annexation process for a very long period of time. It's very easy for the acquisition to take decades because it did. Um, and so I want to make sure that this gets, you know, front burnered. 
uh, and active in our uh, work plan because, you know, from my perspective at least, it still is. Um, I want to go to the locations for affordable housing. Um, the specific request from our housing committee, uh, our housing commission rather, to have a subcommittee locate locations for affordable housing. I am 100% behind that. We need to have some kind of mechanism from our public and from council to have first input as to uh, the locations for the procurement process. I, I don't see any reason uh, to cut council or the public or the commission out. And I see this as our mechanism for being able to engage the public. Um, and um, you, you know, I, I'm again, 100% uh, for the need uh, for this, because if, if we let this happen passively, and, and I'll tell you, because it's been a public um, item, the, the county Board of Supervisors has already considered an item with regard to a location in Cupertino for Measure A funding for affordable housing. It is directly across the street from Apple's Infinite Loop campus. It's where the Outback Steakhouse uh, you know, shopping center is. If we don't get on top of this, if we do not engage in this as a council and through our commissions and the public, then we're not going to have options when this comes to us. Um, and it will have to come to us now because of uh, certain process um, requirements that have not been driven by us. So 100% behind that. Um, I've spent most of my time talking about it, but it's that important. Um, okay, fine. With regard to the city seal, I understand the sentiments. Um, I would at least hold on to the city store. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't think it'll take too long to put some trinkets forward. And we're... Um, you know, we're, we're well in the process of doing that. Um, I had a question about the revamp of the block leader program, but I think that's been pretty well covered. Um, those are my major items, so I'm out of time. Uh, all right, so I see hands that are still up. I, you know, I think what we can do, because we're all agreed that, look, we're going to have another session. And, you know, I promise you we will have it relatively soon. Uh, it will not be after this month. Uh, March is a long month. We've got five Tuesdays. Um, I think maybe, and I'll work with uh, our city manager on this. I think maybe we have it like we've traditionally had um, this uh, uh, the, the, the session on a Saturday. Um, obviously, it's not going to be at a hotel, um, but it could be you know a bit drawn, more drawn out and have the items bucketized uh, into their particular categories. So that we can have a proper uh, work plan, um, you know, engagement with our public and with each other. So, you know, with that, I mean, I'm I'm oh, I'm open to having a minute or so as a wrap up from each of our council members. But if you can bear with and and kind of hold back these last uh, you know moment thoughts uh, until we get to the session that will be upcoming, um, then I'd be happy to uh, you know move on to the next item at this point. Uh, I, I do see two hands raised from Councilmember Willie and Councilmember Moore, and so um, let's let's try that. You know, we'll uh, try to do a, a wrap up thought. Uh, Councilmember Willie first, and then Councilmember Moore. So let's go back to sharing my screen, and uh, I would say though that uh, I saved my discussion totally to the end, and so I hope you'll bear with me. Uh, at least a little bit. So on quality of life, down here at number four, we have pollution monitoring. But what's really important to our community is Lehigh and Stevens Creek Quarry. So I think this should be Lehigh with a subcategory, pollution monitoring, truck traffic monitoring. The uh, next one is that 5G cells in residential areas are very important to our community. And when staff doesn't have time to be uh, doing sufficient um, uh, work with the community, uh, then it needs to be a work plan item. The Lawrence Mitty, I fully agree with um, uh, Mayor Paul. And the last one uh, for that is Memorial Park. That is the center stage for Cupertino, just like uh, uh, 
Uh, Golden, I remember Willie, your, your part is, collapsed, but I, I was very, um, I, I, I was very, very, very compelled by your comment that you did not actually ask any questions. So I will give you my minute. Um, so okay. please, we'll, and I'll try and be quick. But Golden Gate Park for for San Francisco is what Memorial Park should be for Cupertino. And when I take my my family to San Francisco and Golden Gate Park, it's hard to find parking there. Well, we should have that. I walked. Uh, Memorial Park today and you know it's dilapidated and even a small improvement of blue pebbles in the pond area to make it look somewhat nice so now I'll leave all that those are my comments for the work plan now Councilman Moore brought up about prioritizing and uh, 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 Tim Borden our interim city manager had a very good way of doing that where he let all the councilmen rank with a number from 1 to 10, and then he compiled them all, and the one with the lowest numbers uh, were the highest priority for the council. And that gives us all our opportunity to put what weight we feel on all the uh, items, and I'd like to suggest that we, we follow that. Um, and... Uh, with that, I think I'll go ahead and leave it, but those are my comments that I think for my priorities, for our community, that's what we should be looking at. And a lot of these other ones, you know, not this year. Okay, thank you, Council Member Willie. And yep. Council Member Moore has her hand up. Okay, uh, real quick, I'd like to hear more because I didn't hear this in the uh, committee assignments. I'd want to know more about the, uh, if I heard it right, count the county involvement uh, with regards to the Outback site and Measure A funding. Um, you know, if you can reserve that to the end and, and, and fill us in on what, what's going on there. Um, and I would like, you know, I, I really like um, Council Member Willie's suggestion for prioritization, the numbering system. We did something like that for at the planning commission level uh, a couple of years ago and if staff could suggest to how we go about prioritizing so that we can be more efficient with our time when we um when we get into this uh but i would not like to see well i don't want to see items knocked off um that the commission might have suggested and i don't or that the council members suggested and i think that we should also um if possible be allowed to you know email email in that, you know, a, a suggestion if, um, so that uh, if, if some items were missed, uh, perhaps we could add them in or at the start of the next meeting, we, you know, just do a, do a vote on an item and say, you know, I, I, this, this is really important. I didn't see it anywhere. Um, can we add this on? And then we decide that, you know, yes, or yay, we'll consider it or nay, no, no consideration. Um, but if we have a have a nice process at the start that we've all agreed on, I think we can get through um, these items quickly. Okay, thank you, Council Member Moore. Council Member Way. So I think I have a minute. So I really want to agree with Council Member Moore. We need to have a methodology so that we are efficient. And the second thing is, um, we need to do our homework. We, we need to do what projects we're looking at and know what it is instead of asking questions. We need to ask questions ahead of time so that we're ready and we can really prioritize. And third is, I really would like staff to let us know what can, how much time they have. I mean, we can have all these great ideas and, and they're all very important, but we need to fit into the staff time because time is of essence. There are things that we really need to do, okay? So that, um, so let staff, tell us what are the time frames so we can look at what we like to do and really prioritize them. I mean, we can have this year, next year, like Council Member Moore said, it could be a, sometimes it could be a multi-year project, but there are some things we need to do. So I need three things. First, the methodology, so we're efficient. The second, everybody get prepared, so know what we're talking about. And then third, how much project can we do? How much, uh, you know, work we can do? Okay, great. Thank you, Council Member Way, right around a minute. And we have Vice Mayor Chow with her hand up. Hi. So I um, I think some of the items are marked as operational. I would still like to see them on the work program. For example, the hybrid meeting one. Yes, it could be absorbed, but it's still a new thing that we are new enhancement. So it will be good to be a work program item that we got, get update and we are able to provide input on. And commissioners will be able to provide input on even on operational items. 
and get update. And another thing is, um, I think um, the current, um, I think, yeah, it's a good idea to have a whole list to put all the items in one document together so we can see here are everything that's proposed by whom. And then we have a list that's uh, proposed by, recommended by staff. And then we, when we prioritize, we have the whole list rather than scattered around the multiple documents right now. Mm, yeah. Okay, great. Well, that's precisely at one minute. Uh, it's been really great input. You know, um, wh where I think we're kind of at process wise is we're probably looking at the fourth or fifth Tuesday in March um, or the fourth or fifth week in March. Um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep you apprised. Um, I, I wish I could say get some of your final thoughts in by email by a certain time, but um, you know, there, there's a lot of preference and um, you know, good uh, instruction with regard to having a methodology by which we can, you know, objectively, you know, rank and order uh, and also an appetite to have public engagement on this uh, and, and, and have the whole work plan considered in a more uh, systematic and thorough manner. So I hear you there. We'll uh, work together with, uh, or I'll work together with our city manager to um, have, a, a, have a proper work plan session um, with all of the information that we have here. I think we're actually in a pretty good spot you know, as a initial matter to, uh, you know, get uh, a full uh, range of considerations there uh, along with a, a nice process uh, to uh, get to consensus on what that uh, work pr program looks like uh, going forward for this upcoming year, uh, as well as um, our, our list of priorities. So thank you very much for that. Um, let's uh, conclude item number uh, item number nine, I believe it was. Um, and so we'll go on to the second reading of ordinances, which is item number 10. Um, and it will be ordinance number 21-2223 uh, regarding uh, replacing level of service with vehicle miles traveled. Um, this being the second reading, um, staff, would you like to, uh, well, Madam City Clerk, if you would please conduct the second reading as an initial matter. So when we get that out of the way first. This is the second reading and enactment of ordinance number 21-2223, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Cupertino adding Title 17 and Chapter 17.08 to the Cupertino Municipal Code, replacing level of service LOS with vehicles mile traveled, vehicles, vehicle miles traveled VMT for use in transportation analysis pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act CEQA transition from level of service LOS to vehicle miles travel BMT for determination of transportation impacts under the California Environmental Act CEQA as required by Senate Bill SB 743, which includes a finding that adoption of the ordinance is exempt from the California Envir Environmental Quality Act. Great. Thank you very much, Madam City Clerk. Um, are there any questions of staff for the second reading of this ordinance before I turn it over to um, members of the public who have commentary on this. I don't see any hands raised. Uh, and so we'll move it over to um, members of the public. Jennifer Griffin has her hand raised and I'll remind the public that you'll need to raise your hand by the time Jennifer is done with her comments uh, in order for me to call on you. So welcome Jennifer. Uh, thank you, Mayor Darcy. Um, okay, this item, uh, we have talked about it. Um, I will tell you right now, um, I am extremely jaded toward not having the public have as many tools for transparency anymore. I, Because I have been so involved in studying the housing bills the last two years, trying to find out where the funding sources are coming from, some of these charities are throwing money out, backing all these bills. I am all for as much transparency transparency retention for the public on anything of SB. I mean, I thought I learned stuff about the Senate when I was in high school and college, but my education in the last two years has just been extraordinary. Federal, state, Oregon, Washington, California, Sacramento. But I am, I understand 
um, level of service. I have lived level of service. VMT is a new language. Okay, maybe they're comparable to French and English and Spanish, but I think we need, I, I am not convinced that a VMT is better than LOS, and I've sat through as many hours of this as you all have, plus hours in other cities with LOS and Santa Clara and Los Altos, so, and, and Santa Cruz. This was a couple years ago. So we need to do everything possible to keep LOS in the equation just because someone says that SB 743 can do this. I don't believe everything I hear coming out of Sacramento anymore. Thank that to Senator Weiner. So yes, keep LOS in there because to me, anything dealing with limiting CEQA, limiting the ability, because it's the language, the public knows how to talk LOS. And I resent the fact that anybody in Sacramento would tell me, the public, that I have to stop talking LOS and start learning VMT. I've had to learn everything about these housing bills, and it's taken a lot of time, but I'm glad I did. But please make sure we keep LOS in the equation. I am highly suspicious of the motivation. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. And uh, no other people have their hands raised. Uh, we'll bring it back to council. Council member Moore, you have your hand raised. And so what I would like to do uh, before we open the discussion is to entertain a motion uh, before we open it up to discussion. Would anyone like to move um, the second reading along with an enactment at this point? Uh, so I'll move that. I'll move that ordinance number 212223 be read by title only and that the city clerk's reading constitute the second reading thereof. And I also move that ordinance number 21-2223 be enacted. Okay, would anyone like to second council member Way's motion? I'll second. All right, council member Willie seconds. And our hand was raised from council member Moore. Council member Moore, did you uh, have any comments that you wanted to provide? Okay. Um, all right, so at this point, let us go ahead and vote on the motion. Madam City Clerk, please conduct a roll call vote. Council Member Moore? Aye. Council Member Way? Aye. Council Member Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. All right, at this point, we are on to public hearings. Our first item under ordinances and action items is uh, to to look at the mid-year uh, financial report um, to uh, accept that report from staff for our current fiscal year uh, 20 to 21 and to consider approving a budget modification increasing appropriations um, by $32 million, and revenues by $34,509,156. Um, all right, so our public um, report from staff, I believe will be from, from Zach. Will you be giving our, uh, our report tonight? Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Paul. Uh, yeah, Christine Alfaro, Director of Administrative Services and Zach um, Korach and I, City's Finance Manager will be tag teaming this mid-year financial report update for the fiscal year 2020-2021. Before we begin, I just want to take a moment to thank City Manager Deborah Fang uh, for her uh, leadership and guidance as we put this together along with department heads and staff in all of the departments. Uh, Zach and I get the pleasure of presenting uh, these to you, but it really is a citywide effort uh, to get these reports put together. So with that, we have a quite a meaty agenda to get through, uh, but we're going to move through a lot of these slides quickly. We're going to present this at a high level, um, starting with our reporting cycle, um, moving on to how we ended fiscal year 1920, um, and then moving on to the amended budget as of December 31st, 2020. These two areas, excuse me, will focus primarily uh, looking at all funds ac across the city, and then we'll move into a more general fund focus um, in a few slides. We'll go over the recommended adjustments uh, included in this report, and then we will go over the recommendations before council this evening, 
and next steps. Lastly, we'll wrap up with our transparency and engagement efforts on the city's finances and budget. So with that, this is the uh, budget reporting cycle. So staff is before you presenting or with reports a minimum of five times per year. Uh, this per fiscal year, this year we've done a few additional COVID updates. Um, in addition, uh, budget adjustments can be brought um, by departments as a separate agenda item if it's off cycle, um, if it's off this reporting cycle. Uh, this evening we have mid-year in front of you which covers the first six months of the fiscal year or july through december um, and this report normally uh, comes before council in mid uh, sorry end of february early march um, and then we'll be closing out the current fiscal year in terms of reporting in may with our third quarter report and then starting the cycle for the next fiscal year in may as well So the first thing we're going to cover is across all funds, fiscal year and actual versus budgeted. And so in the chart that we'll load here in just a moment, the gray bar represents the um, amended budget as of year end. The red bar represents the expenditures and revenues that were the actual expenses and revenues for the city, again, across all funds. And then the light blue bar represents um, what that difference was between the budget and the actuals. And actually, in this chart, where we would like you to focus is really on the red bar, um, because this is where we're going to talk about the impact that having our expenditures come in lower than our revenues had overall on the city's um, fund balances across all funds. There is one change to this chart, or not chart, um, but one change from when we presented this chart in first quarter, and that's that the revenue number uh, ticked up quite a bit. And the reason behind that, we covered it a little bit in our COVID update, is the accrual methodology for our sales tax payments. So previously, we would accrue, we would um, take in the dollars and account for those dollars when we receive payments. Um, going uh, forward, as part of a recommendation from our auditors, we will be um, accruing those payments back to the month when the dollars were actually earned. Um, so just one takeaway from um, here. So. When we're looking at those two numbers, the 157.5 in expenses versus the 180.4 in revenue, that difference is 22.9 million. And that 22.9 million breaks out, um, as you can see here in this chart, by fund, with the biggest savings happening in uh, the general fund um, at 15.5 million of that 22.9. And Sorry, let me step back for a moment. The 22.9 is really representative of how much the city's fund balance or save a savings account grew uh, based on how we ended the previous fiscal year. And again, here you can see the largest amounts in savings really occurred as part of the general fund. Our special revenue fund used $2.3 million of fund balance, and this is really related um, to uh, capital projects um, that um, have carryover uh, year after year, and as those projects get completed, you'll see um, fund balance being used. Um, and then we had uh, capital projects um, with 7.3 million, and this is just indicative of um, allocated capital project funds that have not been spent or allocated. And then the enterprise and internal service had uh, moderate savings of 1.2 and 1.1 million. Um, next, we're covering um, the amended budget. So. Our current amended budget across all funds is 203.8 million. And this chart will illustrate kind of how we got to that number from our proposed budget number that we presented to council. So we began with a proposed budget number of $113.8 million. As part of the final budget, we actually reduced that number to 110.6 million. And this was primarily due to uh, COVID uh, expenditure reduction strategies that were approved by council. And then as part of um, adjustments and carryovers in the current fiscal year, we increased the budget by 93.2 million. And then the subsequent slide, I uh, will walk you through uh, what made up that 93.2. And so the table before you um, shows, um, begins at the fund level on the left-hand side here. We go into what the adopted budget was and then we cover carryovers. And so a carryover simply means council approved budget for a specific project purpose um, purchase. 
And uh, for whatever reason, um, departments have not been able to complete the project or it's a multi-year project or purchase what they needed to purchase. And so what, they, what we do is, as long as uh, departments are using the carryover dollars for the same manner in which it was approved, we go ahead and do a carryover appropriation. And as part of the first quarter report, uh, we provide a very detailed um, listing of what those carryovers were for. Here, um, some of the big takeaways, general fund, that 26 million, uh, most of that, about 22 million, is actually a carryover related to the Valco Town Center contracts. So if you may recall about a, a year or so ago, contracts were brought before council that, um, or Balco Town Center because it's such a large project where we would contract out um, some inspection and permitting work related to that project. Uh, the rest of these really um, in special revenue and capital projects are mostly driven by uh, capital improvement projects. And that's because we budget those projects. Once they get approved, 100% of the funding for that project gets budgeted. Um, and then every year, any leftover dollar gets carried over if the project has not yet been completed. When we look at the encumbrances, encumbrances are a legal obligation to pay. You generally find these um, locked in a purchase order. So we've signed a contract with a vendor uh, for a specific amount, and then we have a purchase order cut for those amounts. If we have not complete, completed that work and closed out the purchase order, those encumbrances, they get carried forward into the next fiscal year. Lastly, we have adjustments that were approved by council in the first and second quarters of the year. Um, the, I'm going to just highlight a couple of big item ones here that were approved just for a little memory recall. Uh, we approved uh, $1 million for the McClellan Road Bikeway Phase 3, $735,000 for COVID-related projects, and $286,000 for the Recology Agreement. And the result of that gets us to that $203.8 million for our existing budget. Um, the adjustments before you this evening are not actually currently included in the, this number. Uh, so next we want to cover um, what we see happening in the general fund. And the next few slides here will really take a general fund focus. Um, and the chart before you shows revenues um, and so revenues and expenses. Uh, the triangle is indicative of where we are in the current fiscal year. And I'm uh, sorry, the triangle and the bold number is where we are in the current fiscal year. And then you see the top and low end of the range when we look back three years. Um, so this is really looking at a three year trend and saying, are we where we historically have been? And the story on the revenue side is um, we're not, we're actually a lot higher um, than we have been, not a lot higher, 3% than our highest year in the last three years. So we're tracking higher on our revenue side and our expense side we're actually tracking closer to the lower end of this range where our lowest in the last three years has been 42% and we're currently at 45%. And this is just the tool staff uses because generally um, absent a COVID year, a lot of um, the city's revenues and expenditures coming in do tend to be cyclical. Um, and this kind of gives us a good indication if we're on track or not. So we take a little deeper dive into um, what is happening in the general fund, focusing on the city's uh, major revenue categories um, and looking at dollars received as of um, December 31st, 2020 versus December 30, 2019. And so the first thing I'm going to call your attention to is the very last row, because um, we've seen our revenues are 1.3 million higher or 3%. So if we looked at this number alone, we might say, okay, well, it's not that big a difference than where we, um, you know, where we were last year. But the reality is, is when we look a little further into the detail, I'm only going to cover a few of these categories. Um, there's some really interesting shifts happening um, that this bottom line number doesn't really tell that a really good story for. And I'll start with the first white line here on sales tax. Uh, this number is four, almost 4.7 million higher than last year, or about a 39% change. And there's a few reasons for this. Uh, the first being uh, an increase in our business to business sector, uh, really being driven by the online sales um, due to the shelter in place order. Um, the second thing is a, a decision and the implementation of what is known as the Wayfair decision which says if out-of-state retailers um, are um, 
having sales of half a million dollars or larger, they need to remit sales tax to the state of, in the state of California, they have to remit sales tax to the state of California. And the result of that is that those dollars um, get allocated to the county pool. And currently the city's share of that county pool is about 10%. So those are new dollars that previously weren't in the mix uh, last year. It is important to know the spike related to business to business. Um, right now we, we, um, we suspect and anticipate that that is a one-time anomaly that as stores begin to open up again, that you will see uh, less of people shopping online and more uh, folks getting into the brick and mortar stores. So this is something we're gonna continue to watch um, to see what exactly happens in sales tax. Uh, when it comes to property tax, this is not a huge uh, shift happening here from last year. It's about a 6% increase, almost half a million dollars but we want to talk about property tax just for a second uh, because the assessor's office actually just released uh, the CPI increase for our property tax role uh, for next fiscal year. And for the first time in a very long time, they're not recommending the max two per, um, consumer price index 2% increase. They're actually going to be going with a 1.036% uh, increase. And so, that's significant for us because it feels like the assessor is signaling um, that there's going to be a slowdown in um, how property values are increasing. The other thing with property tax that we continue to watch is the impact that um, potential post-COVID um, telework policies may have on um, housing values, both, both residential and commercial for our area. So. Um, it's still good news there, but we want to just caution that good news with a little bit of there's a few out known, unknowns out there that may be a little bit before we figure out if there is will be an impact related to those. The third one is transient occupancy tax. We talked about this one at the COVID update as well. This has been our hardest hit revenue category, as you can see, down 3.4 million from the same time last year, overall a 79% drop. Um, and this is the area we think will probably take the longest to recover. Um, and we're at the moment still kind of trying to wrap our heads around if we're gonna see it return to pre-COVID levels or not. Um, again, given the potential for um, mass telework um, and perhaps limited travel. Um, so we'll wait to see what's happening on that one, but a pretty major impact. Um, the only other categories I wanted to cover where licenses and permits, and you see this number is down. This is really due to a one-time payment uh, that occurred last year uh, that did not, uh, in construction tax, that again, one-time payment last year, we won't see it um, this year. And uh, with that, we'll move on to the expense side. And any, if anybody's interested in a little more detail on some of these other categories, they are included in the city's um, financial report. So each category has a short write-up on what's causing that change. Uh, next, moving on to the expense side of the house. Um, this is good news here. We're overall tracking almost a million dollars less than we were the same time last year. And I'm only going to cover the first four lines up on top here. The first related to employee compensation and benefits. Uh, I'll focus on benefits because it's got the biggest increase at almost half a million or 12%. Um, and this is really being driven by increased retirement costs, increased health costs, and increased workers' compensation uh, cost here as well. Um, and so we're seeing uh, uh, that taking place. Our employee compensation is up just a slight 1% from last year. Some of the increase there are there are negotiated salary increases. Those are offset by decreases in part-time hours as well as vacancy savings. And so as you may recall, as part of our COVID balancing strategy, um, the staff, staff recommended and council approved uh, leaving five positions vacant in the city, uh, which would result in overall an $800,000 savings by year end. Um, and we're tracking uh, vacancy and vacancy savings, and we feel like we're on a trend to uh, meet that goal of uh, five vacancies and $800,000. Uh, the next line, materials and contracts, both down about, um, first one down about $700,000, second about $600,000, and 27 and 5% respectively. Um, these are also areas where you may recall where we had targeted uh, COVID expenditure reduction uh, categories or strategies for these two areas. 
Um, and so what we're looking at right now is uh, we're still staying in, in line with the savings we thought would materialize here. So all in all on the expense side, we're doing a really good job of trying to stick to our savings that we needed to get in order uh, to mitigate some of those, what we anticipated were going to be COVID impacts. And so right at the end of the day, what, is, what does that mean? What is the impact for the city and um, for the city's savings account primarily? And so the following chart takes us through actual for uh, calendar year 2018 and 19. Over to the left here, we'll show all the different categories of uh, fund balance in the general fund that we have. Uh, next, we take you through our year-end projection as of 1920. Um, what we had anticipated for fiscal year 21 as part of the adopted and where we think we're going to be for fiscal year 21 as part of the mid-year projection. And so there is a big shift. If you look at total fund balance, we were at about 52 million. And now we actually think we're going to end the year closer to 78.12 million. And really the biggest category that grew was the green bar. So it went from 16 million and then it, it jumped up to almost 34 million. And so you may be asking yourself, why were we so off? Um, the first thing I will say is when we look at the adopted budget, we haven't yet closed out the previous fiscal year. And so we tend to be conservative and assume all our budgeted revenue and all of our budgeted expenses will come in. And um, making that assumption generally means we, when we come in at mid-year, we're making a projection to uh, let council know that our savings is actually greater than we thought it was going to be. And so this is more about our conservative approach at what happens here at Adopted. And then at mid-year, we have six months under our belt of actuals, and we feel uh, we're in a better place to make a, a better, closer projection here. Um, of this 33, almost 34 million, uh, the adjustments that Zach will talk about in just a moment are actually already included in this number for unassigned. Uh, the other thing I will say, or the last thing I will say about fund balance is this number is high. Um, and we're going to be coming as part of proposed with some potential strategies for what to do uh, with this excess fund, fund balance over the next few years. Um, so stay tuned for that um, as we work through our forecast, our next 10 year forecast. And so with that, I will hand it over uh, to Zach Koresh uh, to get us through our adjustments for the year. Thank you, Christina. Um, so the slide before you has the mid-year budget adjustments by both fund and department. Um, admittedly, there are some, some large numbers on here. We're gonna go through each of these line item by line item, but as we can, we'll, we'll soon find out the majority of the numbers that are gonna be discussed pertain to the certificates of participation refinancing that was completed during the fall of 2020. But again, we'll, we'll be going over each of these in more detail. Next slide, please. So first, and we'll be covering these by, by department. Um, so first with community development, a total uh, budget ask of $75,000. The first is $50,000 for density bonus update. This will be additional contract services to assist in updating the ordinance um, in accordance with the city work programs item affordable housing strategies. Secondly, $25,000 is being requested for code enforcement. This is uh, needed to abate code enforcement cases that are outside the scope or cannot be mitigated through normal enforcement processes. Next, Next we have um, a request from the Innovation and Technology Department, $1,800. Um, this is titled Scavenger Hunt Application. Um, I will, um, I, I do notice that this is a relatively and unusually small budget ask. Um, but it is not part of the fiscal year 2021 adopted or amended budget. Um, the reason why we wanted to bring this to City Council's attention is that staff feel that this will be an ongoing or a recurring item, and we wanted to bring it forward for City Council consideration. Although this is going to be residing in the uh, IT budget, um, it is working in concert with Cupertino Safe Routes to School. Um, with Cupertino students uh, likely not returning to school campuses, until 2122, or at least being heavily impacted um, with remote learning for the remainder of, um, of the school year. Safe Routes to School has been actively trying to 
identify new creative ways to um, to encourage um, activity among students while they continue to um, study virtually. And so this scavenger hunt app um, is, is one of those efforts to, to engage and encourage um, physical activity amongst Cupertino's youth. So then we move right into non-departmental department. This is a total ask of $32.5 million um, starting with the first line item, this is uh, consistent with, with previous fiscal years. Typically, as part of the mid-year financial report, city staff will bring forward a recommendation to city council as to um, how to best use some of the excess general fund fund balance. So consistent with that, and given, like Christina had mentioned, with a current projected ending fund balance of $34 million, $34 million in unassigned general fund fund balance, Staff are recommending a one-time $5 million transfer to the capital reserve. And I want to be clear, this is the $5 million is not being allocated to any one specific project. Rather, it's going to be set aside in the capital reserve uh, to be used at a later date or allocated for specific projects at a later date. Um, and as for the, the, the fiscal health or the fiscal status of the capital reserve, assuming um, the city council were to approve this $5 million transfer, we would likely be starting the next fiscal year with approximately $11 million in fund balance in the capital reserve that will be free and clear um, to be allocated to future CIP projects. The next line item is a sales tax estimate increase, uh, an increase of $8.6 million. We talked earlier about sales tax and the positive experience from B to B and the increase in online sales that, it, that the, the positive impacts that it's had on Cupertino's sales tax base. This is really to better align um, the, the sales tax budget estimates in comparison with the actual sales tax receipts that we're receiving thus far and what we are projecting to end the year with. Transient occupancy tax, um, conversely, like we had um, mentioned earlier, continues to, to be heavily and, and negatively impacted. And so again, I'm trying to better align the, the estimated revenues for transient occupancy tax against what we've received to date and where we're projecting to end the fiscal year. Then we move into the certificates of participation and ultimately the refinancing of, of the city's pre-existing certificates. So the $25.9 million of revenues or inflows um, offset with $27.5 million in expenditures. We're gonna see that this has a, a negative impact on fund balance of $1.6 million but it's really gonna be a, a net wash. And the reason for that is because we currently have $1.6 million set aside as a debt service reserve. Um, this has been required to, to be maintained over the, the previous certificates of participation. And so the net impact from this entire transaction will be, will be zero. Um, but we also wanna draw attention and um, speak to, to the future savings that's been achieved for, um, by completing this refinancing. And we'll see um, just under $500,000 annually in debt service savings. And over the next 10 years until the debt service is fully repaid, just under $5 million total for that 10 year period. And so because we are achieving the 493,000 approximately in debt service savings in this current year, um, we're reducing the budgeted expenditures for that 493,000 and we are recommending that the that that amount be transferred back to the general fund. So on an annual basis as part of the adopted budget, the general fund will transfer the required debt service to the debt service fund to make those debt service payments. And because we've achieved the savings this year, we'll be transferring it back to the general fund. And as part of um, on May 18th, when we discussed the proposed budget study session, we'll be um, we'll be presenting and showing a reduction in that debt service um, in comparison to any of the previous fiscal years. And so with that, that wraps up the, the budget recommendations um, and for the recommendations on this item, it is to accept the city manager's mid-year financial report for the current fiscal year and adopting a resolution um, that would increase appropriations by 32.6 million and revenues by 34.5 million. As for the next steps, um, we will be before you again um, for to present the third quarter financial report on May 18th. That will pertain to fiscal year to the current fiscal year 2021, 
and then coinciding on that same evening, the proposed budget study session for the upcoming fiscal year 21-22. And last but not least, similar um, to what we had prepared as part of the first quarter financial report, uh, with the use of OpenGov, um, we had converted the, the mid-year financial report as well as the, the mid-year staff report into an online interactive um, tool, um, again, through the use of OpenGov, so that anybody who is um, viewing this presentation and viewing the interactive uh, reports, they're able to drill into any of the revenues or expenditure accounts um, and, and really kind of drill into those details um, to get a little bit more of a real-time and interactive experience. And so if anybody is watching um, and has an interest to view these reports, you can scan these QR codes on the right side of your screen and you'll be taken um, directly to these reports. So with that, that will conclude the presentation and we can open it up to questions. Indeed. Uh, does anyone from council have questions of either of the presenters? Council member Moore. Okay. Um, thank you, Zach. I was wondering if you could uh, pull up the, the resolution attachment A and uh, give us a little background on uh, the information in the table on um, page two of um, the resolution. That is a very good question. And as I am looking at it, um, those numbers do not correspond to the items in the subject or recommended action or the presentation. So they will need to be updated, but I can provide, provide those updated numbers in real time right now, if, if you would like. Um, yes, thank you. Sure. So um, Christina, if you wouldn't mind pulling up um, slide number 13, I think we're having some data import issues. Um, so like on the previous item where Vice Mayor Chow noticed that the on the formats, the number was the same, um, at least the dashboard is correct. The, the um, work program dashboard is correct. So we'll be troubleshooting all of that. Thank you. So this will be um, summarizing and reflecting the, the correct numbers broken out by fund, um, similar to how the resolution should have had it presented. Um, total general fund impact will be a decrease in fund balance of 1.486 million. Debt service funds will be decreasing by 1.631 million. And capital projects funds will be increasing by 5 million for a net increase across all city funds of 1.882 million. Any other questions, Councilmember Moore? Okay, so well, uh, for page two, the, the table is, is um, it's a little bit different. Uh, um, so if you, if you wanna move to questions from the public or, or comments, uh, we could do that. But I mean, I'm, I'm not prepared and we shouldn't be prepared to, um, you know, pass this resolution until it's um, until the issue is resolved. Councilmember Willie, you have your hand up. Do you, did you have any clarifying questions? Yeah. Yes, I do. If you can go back to the two slides, fiscal year twenty one amended budget as of December 31st, I think it's probably slide number eight or nine. And the one right after that, the fiscal year 21 appropriation changes. So there you go, That there's one. <clears throat> I, I, I'm still trying to, you know, get this one sorted out. This one and the next one, the next one more so in this one, an adjustment of 93.2 million. Uh, 
I mean, can you help me understand that? Uh, yes, so that 93.2 uh, million is really called out in these three columns here, the carryovers, the encumbrances, and the approved adjustments. And when we're looking at carryovers, um, specifically in the general fund, as I mentioned, 22 million of this is related to um, the Valco Town Center project, which had various um, contracts uh, for different uh, permits and inspections happening at Valco that were being contracted out. When we look at special revenue, and capital projects. Uh, the bulk of this is related to capital improvement projects. So when council adopts a capital improvement project, those are generally multi-year projects, but we fund the full cost, cost of the project up front. And so let's say you had a project that was $9 million, but in the first year, you were only able to spend 100,000 of that. The remaining dollars, the um, uh, 8,900,000, uh, 8, would be carried over into the next fiscal year until that project was completed. And so that's what we're seeing in a bulk of these carryovers um, happening here. When it comes to encumbrances, um, that means we have a contract um, or have issued a purchase order uh, for uh, services or goods. And uh, we have yet to complete or receive the services or goods. And those dollars get carried over through encumbrances. And then when we move to adjustments, which this is probably what council is kind of most familiar with having had approved. Um, we talk about these um, at the first quarter report. And then in addition, any um, other staff reports that go asking for budget adjustments are included here. And as I mentioned, some of the big ones were related to um, the uh, phase three McClellan uh, Road bikeway phase three, in addition to 735,000 for COVID-related projects and another 286,000 for the recology agreement. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I hear that, but I, I'm still trying to, you know, put this thing in, in perspective. So if you focus on the carryovers and you say, okay, well, Valco was, you know, 20 million, 22 million, I guess. And then you say capital projects carrying over $35 million. I mean, what are the capital projects to the tune of $35 million that are being carried over? And to, to my recollection, that's not what we were seeing in previous years. You know, di did an earthquake happen or something? I mean, how is it? I mean, when we have a adopted budget down on the bottom row of 110 million. And then we go over to the amended budget, 203 million. I, I, you know, I mean, if, 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 if the true budget with all those carryovers and stuff was gonna be about 203 million, why did we say that the adopted budget was only 110? We should have known that there was going to be the 35 million carryover. I think we should have known that there'd be the uh, the Valco 22 million carryover. It just seems like when I see a, a, such a disconnect, you know, a, a factor of two, I, I, I start to really question: Do do we have our thinking right? I I typically expect you know a variation, you know. 10%, 5%, you know, okay, an extreme 15%, but an amended budget, 203, when the adopted budget was 110, just really kind of, it's a brick to the forehead. So I'm not sure you can really do anything about that, but that type of, of delta just doesn't seem like we've got our, our bookkeeping uh, properly. Yeah. That is really related to how we budget capital improvement projects. And um, for us, that's really something that we want to do. We don't want to kind of piecemeal a project together uh, because it's going to make it harder to secure that funding or should something, um, you know, something in the city uh, take a turn on the financials, you may have a project that's only half finished. And that is really the bulk of what is being um, carried over and the bulk of that, um, that $93 million uh, being locked up in those capital projects. So um, we have a list of several capital projects. I know um, our public works group brings those as part of the proposed budget. 
but also in various other updates to council. And so those are all at different um, levels of being completed. Yeah, but <clears throat> that, I, I just don't see that as being a surprise. I mean, those capital projects were known, the allocations were there, and so it just seems to me it should have been in the adopted budget unless there's some accounting requirement that says you can't. And then, like I say, I like to think about, you know, what was it the last time and or here, if there's a 5%, 10%, even a 15%, you know, it's within the margin of, of you know, we could spend all day, you know, trying to get it down to the, to the last dollar. But when it, you know, is a factor of two off, so if we were to say last year when you presented this to us, were we off by that much last year and the year before? We, and historically we have had very high carryovers on the capital project side. And I think maybe a better way uh, to look at it or consider it is the reason we don't include it as part of the adopted is council has already given that authority to spend. When we're coming with the final budget, we're asking for new authority in the next upcoming fiscal year. So we would have a sense that when you were gonna carry these dollars over or close to this amount for the capital project, um, that was already known. But instead of saying, we're gonna defund all of these projects and then every year come new to council and ask you to continue to reapprove projects, we take that authority that council already granted and then carry it over into the next year. Okay, so the, just that one last question then, Historically, uh, uh, was it there and I just wasn't seeing it as significantly last year, the previous year, you know, because this is the third year for, for uh, me seeing the budget. Was there that much carryover last year and that much carryover in the previous year? For the capital project, so everything outside of the general fund, the numbers should be close. The general okay. fund was an anomaly this year because of the Valco Town Center con contract. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll keep this so that next year, you know, it won't won't be such a shock to me. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member Willie. Our um, next uh, Council Member is Council Member White with uh, clarifying questions. Yes. I'm very glad John asked this question because these are the questions that I would like to ask. But the budget is always there. The, the general, the, let me understand that the the adopted budget is our general fund budget, but the capital project is always there. It's just that it it's carry over because it hasn't been done. So we, when I look at the budget that I uh, was first handed when I first uh, became a council, it, you can see these budget are somewhere else. It's in the capital project, but the um, adopted project is a, a it's it's a different set of numbers. Is, is that a good way to explain it? Yeah, that would be for any new authority that we need from right. council to spend. Okay, got it. So it's always there. It's just in a different place. Correct. Yeah. It's okay. in this place, the place is the previous fiscal year, and then we bring it into, we bring that authority into the new fiscal year via that carryover. Okay, so, but actually these are very good numbers. Great, uh, Council Member Wood, thank you. Um, any other questions from Council before we move it on to public comment? Okay, I'll move it on to public comment. I have one hand raised from the public, Jennifer Griffin, and I'll remind everyone that uh, by the time Jennifer is done with her comments, you'll need to have your hand up if you want to provide public comment on this item. Welcome, Jennifer. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Darcy. Uh, yes, thank you, staff, for trying to explain uh, budgeting to people who may never have had accounting, <laughs> which is me. Um, I just thought that was interesting when you all made the comment about the online. It sounded like the city was getting more revenue from the uptick in online purchasing. And if I got that Correct. It sounded like the city was collecting more sales tax because of a recent change to the way that sale tax was collected when someone purchases something online. It sounded like the city was getting a portion of what the county was allocated by the state, if that's correct. 
did it also say that we are expecting to see a growth in in um, in retail in I for, I'm sorry, brick and mortar retail once the pandemic recedes, and also what is going on? Why is the TOT not? It is that strictly from hotels? Will we start seeing um, an increase in the TOT once people are inoculated and they can resume traveling for work or they're going on vacations, et cetera? I just wasn't sure what I thought the TOT mainly was from hotel revenue, but I could be wrong. Um, anyone from staff care to address Jennifer Griffin's questions? That's um, our last um, public comment. I'll take that one. Um, so yes, um, uh, Jennifer Griffith is correct um, that sales tax is really being driven by online sales. Um, so with our um, business to business, uh, any online sale, um, if we have their retail office for that business in Cupertino, if there's an online sale in California that gets shipped directly to that consumer, the city is getting a portion of that sales tax. So if you can just imagine during um, some of the holiday seasons and prior to that when there were shutdowns and people were trying to get ready to work remotely, all of that was happening online. People really weren't able to get into those stores. Um, so we're seeing that uptick there in the sales tax. Um, in addition to that, the Wayfair decision is new taxes. So previously, the state was not capturing those sales taxes from out of state um, for any vendors at all. And so with the Wayfair decision, it says if you are an out-of-state retailer, and you are conducting business, shipping things to California, and your sales are over half a million, This you must now remit sales tax to the state of California. And the way those dollars are allocated is those all go to the county pool for the most part. And then based on how much sales tax the city of Cupertino receives in comparison to the other agencies, that sets our percentage of that bucket of money um, that we're able to receive. Lastly, related to TOT, that is the hotel tax or transient occupancy tax. Um, and that is one that we're not quite sure exactly how it's going to recover um, or when. Um, by all indications, we think touristy areas might recover sooner. Um, and they're anticipating areas where it was mostly for business travel may lag a little behind because nobody's quite sure kind of in a post-COVID environment if we've been so used to working from home for so, oh, almost a year now, right? If companies are really gonna be spending that much on travel back and forth, or if they're gonna be kind of content to keep their employees wherever their home base is. Okay, great. Um, I will bring it back to council now, and I'd like to ask for a motion from our council before we uh, further deliberate on this. Um, mm. Excuse me, Mayor Paul. Um, yes, uh, Councilmember Moore. I don't know that I, I, I don't know that I got the the answer to uh, the the resolution um, numbers question uh, because when I'm looking at item, so this is uh, item 11. Uh, when I'm looking at uh, number two, adopt resolution 21-017. Um, the numbers, uh, approving budget modification number 2021-122, increasing appropriations by 32626692 and revenues by 34509156 When I'm looking at table, uh, the table on page two of attachment A, that resolution, I'm not seeing those, those, those numbers exactly. Maybe I'm not reading it right, but if somebody could help me out, are these numbers accurate? I, I have, I, I'm, I'm un, unable to recall where these tie into what we've seen in the presentation. Council Member Moore, if I might, I can I can pull up a, a red line version of that resolution. Please do. Thank you. So the uh, the chart that is struck through is the one that was erroneously included in. The agenda attachment and the revised below reflects the the correct amendments on both appropriations and revenues and across all funds 
Okay, I have one question, Zach. Um, so uh, under revenue amendment, you have 34509153 for the total appropriation uh, last last n uh, number. Um, it's 34509156 um, in the in the um, item two. Yeah. And then I, I uh, okay. Um, so let's see. So it should, the total appropriation, uh, so I, when I'm looking at uh, the last item in the bottom row, um, that's, the, that's the difference between the 34509156 and 32626692, is that right? That's correct. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would just do like a quick check through because I don't want to, I don't want to approve a resolution that the math doesn't work on. Um, so just yeah, just take take a moment and make sure that that you're you're all good with those numbers. Yeah, I I do question how. So these are this is like negative on the last column, the fund balance use of that that would be a negative one million four eighty six three four eight, negative one million six three one. 188 and then a positive 5 million and I should arrive at the same 1882464 is that correct that's correct um I don't know why it's troubling me oh yeah no we, we should be good yeah so you has someone double checked that I have checked it okay great so um Given that the numbers are all correct, uh, may I make a motion, Mayor Paul? Um, yes, please feel free. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? Um, so I move that we accept the uh, city manager's mid-year financial report for FY 2020-2021 and that we adopt resolution number 21-017, approving the budget modification number 2021-122, increasing appropriations by 32626692 and revenues by 34,509, 34,509,156. I'll second that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think you might want to add into just an explicit acceptance of the city manager's mid-year financial report and to the recommended action, um, which was the first, you know, item. Would that, would that be okay to? Uh, you want to accept the, accept the financial report as a... Uh, yeah, just to keep it tidy. With okay. To, uh, recommended action, accept the city manager's mid-year financial report for fiscal year 2021. In addition to what you had. 21, right. In addition to item two, adopting resolution 21-017, approving budget modification 2021-122, increasing appropriations by 32,626,692 and revenues by 34,509,156. Okay. Right. Um, I have a, and I'll just say, I'm, I'm sorry, Councilman Moore. So, um, to specify, you're referencing 21-017 as amended um, tonight, correct? Thank you. I uh, just, yeah, you know, yeah, just thank you. As no, 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 that has to be, yeah, we, we, the red line version. Um, well, yes. All right. uh, okay, so Council Member Wade, do you accept those modifications? Yes, I was, uh, I would uh, second the. Do we have okay. any? Yeah. Uh, further discussion from council by show of hands. Okay, let's vote. Uh, Madam City Clerk, if you'd please conduct a roll call vote. Council Member Moore? Aye. Council Member Way? Aye. Council Member Willie? Aye. Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, uh, we're at about 1030 now. Does anybody want to take a five minute break before we start? Item number 12, let's see, I see heads nodding. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get back here at 1033. We'll see you then.